Welcome to Vlog Thursday, number 308, Unify, Ubiquity Updates, Synology, Errata, and some Q&A. And I pulled this first comment up because apparently, am I, if I caused a stir, um, it wasn't really my intention to cause a stir, but it was more about, hey, when are we going to get this update? And that's just, I don't know, kind of, you know, we keep seeing Ubiquity say they're going to. But it just puts some timelines on it is what we're asking for with the Unify OS 3.0 upgrade. So for those of you that don't follow the Ubiquity uh, things that are going on related to this, what happened is, and actually, you know, I'll, I'll call out uh, Mac Telecom Networks, Cody. He's done some videos on this. I'm excited that they finally have the new WireGuard available. Well, a proper or more proper implementation of WireGuard unless you were one of those people who bought a unified dream machine that update doesn't come for you yet it's coming eventually and it's just a complaint of what does eventually mean uh we believe they will do it because they keep telling us they will but then again um we're all familiar with things i know you know coding's hard and factoring the code and all the things that are going to go into it and it's a lot of architectural from a software standpoint differences in the unified dream machine se versus unified uh, dream machine pro but that doesn't mean we can't be like putting a team on it you know ubiquity is a well-resourced company um i know programmers are hard to come by no matter how big your resources uh may be but there's they'll throw some timelines on it or just be more public other than saying coming soon and that's all um I, and a lot of us you know and i'm not a person i actually i have <clears throat> been more of a person preaching against most of the routing equipment but these they're they're only highlighting my reasons for doing it as opposed to you know the it's just a, it's just a lot of silliness when it comes to all this is how i really feel about it uh i did my video about what i refer to as the weird way unify does vpn and to me some of this could have been avoided just by not being weird about your vpn uh from the get-go if if it just when you included wireguard support if it was just normal wireguard there wouldn't be a need to change it later. I mean, I guess it's one of those things. Maybe uh, I don't understand the vision. Um, someone has an idea. They're going to do things differently. And sometimes that works out really well. And there's other times it does not work out really well. So that may be one of these times. I got to admit, I've done things different myself. And sometimes I'm wrong about it. So that's... Uh... <laughs> uh, Travis is getting paid to moderate. Yeah, there's that too. <clears throat> lots of hey hellos 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 morning from the land down under yes i love i actually my goal is usually not um to cause a stir uh, i it, my goal is to enact change i want to see progress made on these things that's honestly my goal like i want to see uh, the system work better the platform get the updates the users have the things the users want out of the platform and so uh my goal is uh to enact change there's plenty of people who uh pathologically just can't keep themselves out of the news so they're always having to do some type of shenanigans to find themselves in the news but i'm really not that person uh, i my goal is really hey can we do this now the fact that ubiquity directly addressed it is actually something that makes me happy going hey look i got a reply directly from ubiquity on it but unfortunately it replies the same thing we've seen in the forums and i think it's the fact and ubiquity could go a long way with just having roadmaps so uh that's the change yeah <laughs> and that change that's what they're calling it now we'll go with that we're trying to invoke a change um i don't know but that's not all we're here to talk about. I mean, I, I figured I'd bring that up right at the beginning here. Uh, I've already made videos about it. I don't know what more can really be said. It, it's, you know, someone says I'm just, you know, spreading FUD that they're not going to do it. But the the user base, I'm, I'm echoing uh, probably with a louder voice and a bigger audience. What the user base is saying in the forums is when are you going to do it? So now that that controversy is out of the way, I do like. Now, <clears throat> my opinions are not the same as everybody else's, apparently, I've learned. I like the new UI. Leave hate in the comments for me. Fight me there. That's fine. <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I haven't really had any problems. Uh, I don't know. It, it To me, it doesn't seem... Um, 
it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Present, share the screen. <clears throat> uh, yeah, share. There we go. Um, but I, I don't know. I like the new UI, the way it lays everything out. To me, it looks pretty cool. Um, I think, though, someone did point out, like, you... I don't know. They didn't like the way you filtered things for the offline. So let me see. Is offline one of the columns? I think it's probably uptime, last seen, up, down, status, channel. I think people maybe they don't realize that you can. Oh, cool. Put the model back in there. Yeah. Status, online, offline. I. Someone said you couldn't see which was offline, and I was kind of confused because you can, like right here. Now, I got to admit, this is strange. Oh, I see. It's grouping them. So they group the uh, Wi-Fi, but you can filter and show offline devices as a filter. So you you can say, hey, uh, list the offline devices or don't list them, or you can invert the list. But someone said it was too hard with the new UI to do this, and I'm like, I don't know. It seems relatively easy to just click on this and go, hey, here's all the ones online or offline or mix them and sort them by that. Sort them by model, sort them by IP address, sort them by connection, which why do I have connection in there? That seems like a column I don't need. I don't need the network in there. Can I take that one out? Experience network, experience, status, up to date. And I don't care about 24 hour usage. So you can probably take that out. There we go. That looks a little cleaner. I don't know. Like I said, I, I find these uh, relatively easy to use. I think Ubiquiti's done a nice job on that. Just upgraded to Unis, uh, Unify OS 3.0 Cloud Key Gen 2. Seems good so far. I mean, if they did it on the Cloud Key, seems like they should be able to do it. I know, I know it's going to be co more complicated on a UDM Pro, but... You know, you take on a complicated uh, task of building network engineering tooling. So, yeah. Does it work? Because they have feature parity with UI, so you don't have to switch back and forth. Uh, that's what I care about. Well, I think so. I, I don't know what's, you know, well, I'll hold, I'll hold this at least one comment. I don't think I have any feature problems with it from the standpoint of using this UI for managing switches and access points. I don't know if there's problems using it for managing routing, but I don't manage routing with Unify, uh, which I've repeated many times. So I don't find myself switching back and forth anymore, setting these up. Uh, can't drill down as far as I like, show if a client's connected with WP3 or WP2. Hmm. So we go over here to client devices. And let's see, is that information in here? Wi-Fi 5, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it doesn't say, I don't see that in there, but yeah, such is life. That's usually not the biggest problem, I think. It's usually not an issue that I run into, at least. <clears throat> How can we get Ubiquity to give us supply forecast of vendors? It's a real struggle. Um, that's actually a struggle. I mean, if you look at the lead time for Meraki, um, Meraki lead times. So here's, just so I'm pointing it out, that it, it's not, it, it's a supply chain issue. Um we have others that have been experiencing delivery times. Uh, I've experienced with another with another 90 days for about a year, uh, placed 13 months ago. And this was submitted two months ago, so September of 2022. I've seen a lot of people, um, people saying, hey, I've ordered these since January. And it's not just Meraki, it's other companies too. But, you know, the consumers are now starting to see what is happening in the commercial space as well. So this is not, um, I don't know, I don't think there's really any good answers for this because... I don't think the suppliers have the best answers. So they're it's not that they know and aren't telling you. They're trying to sort it out because 
the demand for product far exceeds its availability right now. So it's catching up, but it's still a big challenge. Um, so I don't think there's really any answer that's going to be good or helpful on that one. <clears throat> I'd rather be able to use a shared Mongo D shared network Mongo instead of run dedicated for unify. Um, I don't know. That's, um, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on that one. I generally, I, I keep the Unify to itself. I don't think I'd want to run it in other things for security reasons. I keep it, it's its own VM dedicated to just doing this for all of uh, the systems that we manage on there. So the 3.0, but a ton of great features. Unify Protect EA version has license plate readers for the AI line of cameras. So that's really cool too. So the Unify OS 3 sounds like it's got a lot of great things in there. They probably don't know themselves when we're getting the chips. Probably true. That say, I don't think it's worth selling a UDM Pro over. Um, if you cared about the VPN, I, the other thing too, and I've told people this just in general, this is like my concept on technology. Don't buy something for the features you hope it will have in the future. You should at the minimum be, you know, buying it for what it has today. And maybe you'll get lucky and it'll get whatever feature they claim they'll get done in the future. But if you bought one of these hoping they would put features out uh, like a proper implementation of WireGuard, I mean, it's kind of on you. You bought a product that you hoped one day would get better, uh, but yeah, that's kind of a pipe dream. So you bought the product for what it is. It's great when your products do get better. I will celebrate that, but I don't know that it's a, and I'm not just on what ubiquity, just in general. I don't know if it's always a realistic expectation that, oh yeah, these things will just get better. Nah doubt <laughs> i uh i like to think they will but i don't think they will that's how i feel about a lot of them so let me go and uh, log into something else i'll pull up here in a second there we go um oh we gotta log into synology too so i'm gonna pull the synology up in a second but I also, I didn't have this turned on last week because we were uh, swapping too many things. So we'll share this tab instead. But I've been playing with the new 45 drives. Uh, they've done a lot to this. And one of the cool things, I like the new animations and the disk viewer that they have here. This is the uh, Houston OS. So I'm getting ready to do a new review of this. Uh, but this is just nice. Let me see if I can make it, you know, zoom in a little bit. Make it look nicer. But it shows the different, uh, how the RAID arrays are set up. You can look at the different disks. Has a serial number on there. Uh, the thing I was impressed with is this right here. Is when we pull up this, I added. Now, these cards were not all in here um, when I got the system. This is a card, and it found the card. It says, hey, look, you've added this card in here. And it shows which slot the card's in. So here's your two uh, HBA controllers. But then we also have this card I added in afterwards and it picks it up and says, hey, look, you've got this in this card. It gives me all the information on there, uh, which connections are up, which connections are down, processor information, memory information. It's just nice the way they lay this out. I think 45 drives did a great job on this. Even if I scroll, well, I got to actually zoom out a little bit. But there's the SATAs that are mirrored. It even tells me uh, that information on there. So... I really think that 45 drives has just done a nice job of integrating all this UI and this is all running on standard Linux. So yeah, the Houston OS is what I'm looking at for this. Yes. This is the new 45 drive, uh, 45 drives, Houston OS. So the native to 45 drives is going to be this here, the display because it's their motherboard. Well, it's a super micro motherboard, but this is part of their chassis that they put together. So it's got awareness of where their systems are. But the other pieces that are in here that I'll be talking about, like the ZFS management. Yeah, this is all, um, you can download this. You can set this up yourself and you can um, get this all configured. This is, I, I think this is really slick just the way they put all of this in here and did a nice job on it because we even have the uh, replication uh, configure file system replication tasks um all the different like you know features all controlled through this ui and it's nice because if you're going to start running a linux zfs install you 
kind of want some ability to manage it maybe with a UI. So this gives you a nice UI to manage it, manage your snapshots. Uh, they even have replication set up in here so you can do ZFS send. I mean, you can still do it from the command line, but it's nice that they give you a UI to take some of those tasks and uh, make them a little bit easier to do. So they're doing a great job on it. We like speed of the shop. Those are 10G cards are nice. Yeah, some of ours are running to 25Gs too. Hey, Tom, do you run something on any of your Linux servers? We do not. Um, nope, I, I don't. I don't think, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't see the benefit of running it on my Linux servers. So for now, the answer is no. Oh, actually, the second part of your question is interesting. Uh -huh. Your thoughts on chat GPT and how it will impact MSPs? I don't think it will. I, I we're way too early in the AI stuff. It's it's a great entertainment tool, and that's where it kind of. I mean, I was impressed with uh, of all things I've heard from uh, Chat GPT. I want to say John Green had one of the funnier ones. Uh, that well, good ones as far as to it. So if you look up uh, John Green of uh, Vlog Brothers and his let me find it on youtube so i'll throw the link in there for people who want to watch it so let me find it real quick it was a lot we would have uploaded uh there we go share i'm gonna just show it in the links here though this is a fun one to watch um and it's john green talking about that chat gpt told it says uh ai tells me if ai will write novels and uh he did a fun writing prompt and it's an inner it's an interesting watch so but i don't I, I still see it as an ai system it is just another tool that we have it is not a replacement now um there's probably some users that are not as uh not as smart as an ai chatbot because you know uh, human intelligence is a broad spectrum. So maybe it'll, it'll help us with some of those people. Um, and it'll ask them if they turned it on or off again. Like that's all it really needs to do. That's all the chat bot needs to do is did you turn it on and off again? Is it plugged in? You know, the usual, uh, questions we have to ask. <laughs> Does Houston cockpit, uh, have good ice because FC target management lie on a gauge. You can find it when looking, uh, they have not wrote any UI for the ISCSI. Does it have ISCSI? Yes. Does it have a UI for it? No, they haven't uh, done anything for that yet, which is, I think it's on their to-do list. I don't know. I don't have an ETA for that. I've, I've asked them about it and I believe they told me that the, something that they're, they're working on is that. I toured a jail yesterday. It had so many ubiquity access points because of all the steel and concrete everywhere. Yeah, you have to put a lot of them in in a, a dense situation like that. Lots of challenges, for sure. Anyone impacted by the Rackspace Exchange server mishap? Ooh, I think um, they had a decent user base. I imagine at least a few people are impacted by the Rackspace outage. It's quite the mess. Um uh, incident. Who had a good article on it? Probably TechCrunch. Yeah. Rackspace blames ransomware attack for ongoing exchange outage. I have been saying this for a while, and I said it before, and I posted this on my LinkedIn, and the, the term I use, and I allegedly, I, I can't quote this because I don't know the person who said it. Allegedly, even Microsoft is uh, not publicly, but people who are high up saying exchange has become in an indefensible position. Microsoft's not dedicating any resources to security. So do I blame Rackspace or I blame the people that won't get off exchange or I blame people that won't force people off of exchange? If you're on the exchange server, it's, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of how many times like it's not even a when we know it's happening constantly and the what makes me even crazier is the fact that you look at people like um uh what was it kevin beaumont what is uh double pulsar Uh, 
which is blog. We'll pull this up too. So what are the problems with the whole exchange breach and the industry to show how broken the industry is? Um, which is the thing that he talked about? It would have been proxy, not shell. But the problem is, and let me, all right, now they're pulling all this up. If you follow Kevin Beaumont, he posts a lot of good stuff on there. But where are all these problems? The story of the of the claim zero day and Microsoft Exchange, the thing that drives me nuts, and he had a lot of snark and humor about this, about Microsoft's mitigations, because they weren't good. They were inadequate. Uh, and this is something that really drove me nuts. And this is, he had a lot of snark on his Twitter about Microsoft not getting it done properly. And it's almost crazy to think about it that, uh, let's see if I can find it. Microsoft failed to acknowledge mitigation bypass. This is fighting with Microsoft to try to get them uh, to actually understand the risks in their own software. And he, we're relying on like one security researcher to show us how to get an entire multi-billion dollar or trillion dollar company to fix their product. Basically, Microsoft doesn't care about fixing their product. So if you're still running Exchange, you're just running on borrowed time. Oh yeah, about midway through John's video, you will laugh, that's for sure. <clears throat> Tore to jail, did you get out on bail? Tunnel your way out with a spoon? Yeah. <laughs> Fun stuff. Microsoft's preferred solution is to have everyone migrate to 365 for 10 to $50 a month. The user's week revenue, not much will reach to fix installs that don't give recurring revenue. And that's it. Microsoft will still keep selling licenses because someone's buying them. Like that's Microsoft's answer. We're like, yeah, this product's garbage, but you want to pay for it. So we will take your money happily, even though we don't plan on actually doing any proper security with it. So <laughs> yeah, it's just such a disaster right now. So I don't know what to do. Like if you're on exchange, it's eventually going to be one of these incidents. And I think that's why Rackspace's answer is move to Office 365. We're not fixing this thing. It's too broken. It's too hard for us to defend against it. And just let it, let it ride, let it go away. Um, so I, that, that's her answer. Uh, the company is currently moving host exchange customers over to Microsoft 65 to limit disruption. Yep. The issues affecting are ongoing as of this writing. What day was this posted? December 6th. It's probably still go ongoing. I don't think they had a good way to recover from it. So, yeah, the I don't know. The Microsoft, it, it, any, and this goes with any vendor. If any vendor is not supporting it, get away from that product. Uh, it's just the writings on the wall with some of them. And it might be a hard business decision. It's probably an expensive business decision. Um, but it's one of those things like it's going to cost you X to figure out how to migrate off of it, but it's going to cost you some multiple of X and exponential times X to deal with the outages, the security vulnerabilities, having all your information dumped on the internet or whatever else may come of it. It's just one of those big messes right now. How long until MS mishandles IS badly enough uh, so we can stop having to maintain IS servers? I don't know. It's a matter of time before they decide they don't want to do that anymore. I don't know when. I don't know when that is. Um, they're doing a they're doing a horrible job with Windows, not because there's another solution, but because you don't have another solution. Um, they they don't have a way to try to turn Windows yet into recurring revenue. So their security has been kind of a dumpster fire on Windows for years. They're just why would you, what are you going to do? Not use Windows? All your enterprise applications depend on it. So Microsoft slowly and methodically, well, I'm not even methodically, kind of half-assedly pushes out some updates that may break a few other things and cause all kinds of problems. Even more concerning is the hybrid AD exchange on-site management. Uh, the stance is still they have to patch exchange uh, for need hybrid, how to get away from exchange entirely. Yeah, it's... It's a mess. Oh, yeah. 
I as a SharePoint, so uh, it isn't going anywhere. I don't know. SharePoint's another pile of hot garbage. There's a lot of weird things in SharePoint. I don't do much with it um, myself. I have people that work for me. We do because our businesses we support do it. But every time I look at it, I'm like, this is just broken. Like, who designed something this it, not intuitive to use? I don't know. What are you going to move to Linux? Uh, what are you going to do? Move to Linux and you have none of your programs work. Now, slowly, as modern companies are starting up and building things, everyone builds, you know, nice web applications. Web applications kind of solve a lot of the OS problems of trying to run something natively on an operating system. So as we do things that are more web application based, we kind of solve the problem. We just solve it differently. Um, I'm always impressed with, you know, looking, i pull up Zen Orchestra. But when you look at Zen Orchestra here, you're like, oh, look, I can do all these things, manage all these all through web interfaces. And uh, the XO system works really, really well for this. And I don't need to run some tool on my computer to talk to my hypervisor to build things. And then the things that are running on it. And, you know, for example, um, if we go over to here and we go over to like my Unify server. There's my Unify server that runs the Unify interface that I have over here. And now I'm managing first the virtualization stack and then all of the network infrastructure all through a series of web interfaces with no applications loaded. So now my operating system doesn't matter. I can do this from any operating system of the browser. So it, as the future moves towards that, not to mention all the features you get with Google Drive or Microsoft's online version of Office 365 or NextCloud, for those of you looking for the open source version, more and more things are just moving to web applications. And that's where people get things done. Um, off topic, shortcomings with Ninja One. Um, I, yeah, not really a topic for here. Um, I don't really have any, I mean, we're working with them. It's, we always see ways to improve Ninja One. I like it. Uh, we work with them and meet with them for improvements on topics, but there's not like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what to do because I can't do this thing. You know, like we're modifying and making some of the policies easier to manage and things like that, ways to propagate it, but they're not really... I don't know if their shortcomings are just product improvements because no one thought to do it that way or no one thought this is the way that you should lay out this particular area. Uh, like the granular permissions, they were granular, but after some ideas, and this comes back from when we started with it to where it is today, it has way more granular permissions. It was like, hey, these are the use cases that we think we need to do this. So there's not really, I can't really say there's some shortcomings that it has compared to uh, we came from Enable, so moving to Ninja One, it's got everything Enable had, but more. Um, so there's not, a, saying the shortcoming wouldn't be um, a fair assessment. It's not like it's, the, I don't know of another product that has any feature I may also want inside of it. The amount of duplicated features between SharePoint, Teams, Outlook is maddening. Each MS product needs to take course on Unix philosophy, do one thing and do it well. Microsoft does a lot of things poorly. Like there's, that's, <laughs> that's all, we're going to like, we're going to do a lot of things and none of them well. <laughs> uh, exactly what Tom said. We are very, working very close with the teams at Ninja on a weekly and monthly basis. Yeah, my team and people, I'm, I'm on the uh, Ninja, um, what do they call it? Cust they call it CAB, Customer Advisory Board. Uh, the Customer Advisory Board, we meet with the project managers and we talk to them or product managers uh, on different things. And we, you know, we actually interact with them. They're very uh, easy to talk to. And because we are understanding of how to get things done in, in certain ways, because we've, you know, got a lot of endpoints. We got a lot of customers. We have a lot of businesses we're supporting. So we can look at it and, you know, have good conversation with them. Also, their product managers are pretty much all former um, large scale MSPs. So they know what the market needs. That's why the product works so well. Uh, they didn't design it in a bubble and try to solve a problem. They have a lot of expertise accumulated in there. So that's one of the reasons that we, you know, like the product so much over at Ninja. They understand us. We'll just say it that way. All right. What else? Oh, let's talk about the Synology system I'm playing with too. 
Let's see, where is that? I can pull that up in yet another tab. We haven't done anything with it other than like plug it in and set it up. But we got nine terabytes of flash storage in here. Look at all those SSDs in there. So going to do some uh, tests on it, loads a few things. You know, I haven't loaded anything on it really yet. I could probably load some packages on it. All right, I will install. Uh, ooh, active backup DSM. What else can we put in here? Document viewer, DNS. I'm trying to think of the things I'm going to run on here. Probably some virtualization stuff. Virtual machine manager. Sure. Why not install that too? Get all the things on here. But yeah, this is a new uh, Synology. Um, what is this thing called? I, I'll pull it back up in a second. It's their new Flash Station one. Uh, we're going to be doing a whole series of speed tests on it and everything. The uh, Doing a lot of testing. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, switch from home lab to LTS. We can so under the branding, we can actually put business technicalities, home lab. There's the StreamYard logo, which I never use. So we can actually switch things, and I can also switch the backgrounds. Um, so I can change what's around me like that. Which one do I like? That one looks nice. Ooh, I can add they got more, I can add custom colors. They don't have animated backgrounds, I don't think. Yeah, I don't see any. I can do overlays, too. I don't really use these much. Oh, there's the Home Lab Show one. I forgot about that one. Cool. I'll leave that one there. I will say the SSD sounds you makes them uh, feel solid, especially when compared to a Samsung SSD. Yeah, they're nice. Uh, it was already food. Food actually came before today. So FS3410. Three one petabyte flash storage arrays. There you go. Yeah, the FS3410. Let's pull FS3410. Yeah, this is what the device looks like. <clears throat> specs on it Xeon D 1541 16 gigs of RAM maximum up to 128 24 drive bays in it yeah it, these synologies are actually pretty performance they you know they don't have the absolute craziest specs on them uh, but they've proven to be very reliable out in the field and they um we've not really had any of them that i would say over the last few years and I, I, hopefully we are far enough in the future but someone will leave a comment um going but tom didn't you see that video from 2016 where synology had a few of their units with bad power supplies yes i'm aware and that was the thing that did happen so uh, do you have any comments on Xpanology? Never used it, so I don't have any comments on it. Um, we, I've never tried loading or building a Synology that wasn't a Synology. And most of the features I want, to my knowledge, won't work in Xpanology. For example, you know, we do surveillance station and things like that. I don't, I don't think you can use surveillance station in Xpanology one. Considering Synology video for stands, would you recommend over Unify Protect? Yes, I think you have a lot more flexibility and diverse uh, options compared to Unify Protect. I don't think Unify Protect is a bad system, but it kind of reminds me of the Apple ecosystem because Unify Protect exclusively works with Unify cameras. And if you decide to go away from Protect because you don't like some feature, you will have a hard time getting those cameras. It's not impossible, but they don't work as well with other solutions versus with the Synology system. Use all the different cameras you want. They got a large variety of support. So I'm really um, 
I love the surveillance station system. It's it's a it's a really good setup. Which also uh, I have one running at my house here. So I've been using I'm gonna do a follow-up video on this pretty soon, but it works really well. So I'm I have no complaints about it. And it's been this system's been running over a year. We got an Amazon package, a couple of them. <clears throat> And I have the Amcrest cameras on there. If anyone's wondering, I have a video. I have videos explaining uh, the camera systems on here. I've just admitted I'm not going to do anything else productive today unless a customer decides to actually email me back with what they want me to do. So <laughs> we wait a lot on customers who are excited to get something done, but we don't know what it is because they don't reply. I need this thing that isn't working. What is the thing that you said isn't working? Dead air. <laughs> Customers are customers. Um, you know, the problem with Blue Iris, my my problem with it, it runs on Windows. I don't want to have to have a dedicated Windows box for my camera system. That being said, the Blue Iris system has a lot of functionality. Uh, they have a lot of things you can do with it, lots of plugins. So it's kind of neat. I'm not going to take the time to learn it. We are not going to deploy it commercially. It seems to be really popular for home users that want to tinker with things. So because I've seen some people do some really neat tinkering setups where they got all this extra functionality tied to their cameras uh, that they did with Blue Iris. So cool that they've extended all this functionality. Also, the write-ups on it are kind of extensive. It's not just like a drop-in plug-in, click here and get this feature. There's a lot of integrations. But the cool thing is, if you like tinkering with stuff, build integrations. <clears throat> and this is a big part of it here too. Um, like Travis is saying, we put a lot of Synology surveillance system in place. So we're not about to start building a very large scale system and using, uh, yeah. And we are about to start using a DVA for units for the AI. So there's um, those other features in there. And the nice thing with Synology is it's very reliable. And if you're throwing these in businesses, you kind of want a nice, reliable system on there. Uh, but Tom, didn't you see that time everything had an issue while creating a new project every time in history? Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, see me do a full review. I've got reviews already on this Synology Valence Station. So that's there's there's numerous videos I have on those. Yeah, I have one. At, um, yeah, Tom runs at his house. Watch the live stream. So, yes. Because I have one, I've got one on a DVA system, which is their, which is actually what this one is. I also have how to set up the uh, action notices in the camera. We'll go here. We'll go to the cameras. We'll go to my uh, driveway one. But this has the options for, whoops. This moved up. Human or vehicle in the driveway. It, this is not a feature of this particular Synology. This is a feature of the camera being able to pull that information in. So if we go to the camera, and it's the Amcrest camera here. And we go to the setup. I'm actually using the event detection in the camera to be able to, uh, where did it go? You build the regions in here to have it allow you to figure out the actions and events of how you want things to be done for the video detection. So the camera sends a trigger to the Synology to be able to do this. And none of this requires internet access. So if you follow the latest debacle with some of those cameras that allegedly were local, but actually were uploading things, well, there's that. So can you set it to tell you when you have a package? I have it tell me um, when someone crosses an area. So if we, we switch to the figure out the IP address of that camera. If we go into the cameras and we go into my, where's my front porch? We'll log into another camera. You build your event detection in here. 
So it lets me know if someone was on my front porch. And so if someone's on my front porch, I can get a notice sent to me. Or if it's a, um, is it on this one here? Here we go. Here's the different rule sets in here. I have it set up for an intrusion on my front porch. So you see where it's intrusion. I've got this area drawn. This is the way it crosses. So if someone crosses in here, it lets me know. Um, and that will that will alert me to, hey, look, someone left something on a porch for you. Who is your family? Small MSP and have some uh, requests for fans. I think I'll get it set up in my house before a customer installs. Uh, can you view your cameras on mobile phone when out of the house? If so, does it depend on being connected to VPN alerts for camera viewing? So this system I have opened up to the internet so I can view it without a VPN. Uh, a VPN would be probably better, uh, but it's on a separate network, so I don't worry about it as much, and it just makes it easier so I don't have to open up the VPN. But Synology will do push notifications to their app. So because it will do those push notifications, I'm able to, um, you know, get a warning on my phone uh, based on certain triggers that I may want. And uh, it works It works quite well. Well, it works as well as you tune the cameras. Uh, if you don't get the cameras tuned well, they go off a lot more because they detect certain things in there. So uh, how does people vehicle detection work? This now, like Synology does it, but some cameras itself do. So you have to choose uh, or both work. So it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you're trying to do um, vehicle and people detection, the Amcrest cameras will do it without having a Synology that does it. If you want to do license plate collection or face identification, that's a Synology built-in feature of the DVA models. Hey, did you know uh, that you got brought up by one of the biggest gaming podcasts, Nextlander? They just brought you up in the latest episode. Who's Nextlander and why did they bring me up? Because I'm curious. I, I I don't follow some of the gaming stuff, but um, if you want to message me, DM me on Twitter, or get that information to me, I, I don't, or just tell me what video it is. I'm interested. I didn't know they brought me up. So cool that they did. <laughs> so you're also going to be uh, selling first party cameras. I assumed uh, to distance themselves from the now banned Dahu Hickvision sales. Um, I don't know if that's really why. I think they're just getting into the game themselves. Uh, but yeah. We hope never get motor vehicle alert on your front porch camera. Yeah, we really hope not to get one there. Um, surprise you have a system open to the internet. Eh, I wanted this one. I wanted to try it. It's on a separate network, so I don't really worry about it. It doesn't present as big of a risk. It's very locked down to a very specific network, and only one port's open to be able to uh, make it easier to view. So, any ideas for DIY camera encoders, similar to Unify Viewport, something they can pull up our TSP? Not really. So, I, I'm trying to figure out how I should do, how I should cover a video on this. Um, And here, I'll pull up the article for people that haven't seen this. U.S. government bans Huawei, ZTE, and Hikvision Tech over unacceptable spying fears. Um, this is actually not surprising at all. And it's just that these companies are terrible at writing code. So we already know, and someone pointed out, and I think this is right, that it's not a uh, where it's made problem. It's a who wrote the firmware problem. And I can't tell if the firmware is so bad because they're trying to make it bad. They don't care to make it good. They're basically Microsofting it because there's very few competitors in the market space. So they're like, yeah, what are you going to do? Buy um, someone else's camera that costs eight times as ours. Uh, the reality, most things and many electronic things are made in China. It comes down to who wrote the firmware. Now, with these firmware being absolutely terrible, spying is a potential issue. Uh, what is the, it's called like a camera. What is that company, Eufy? 
EUFY. So we have the most recent debate on this. And they made promises. Where's the news? Oh, good. There's still more response to all this. But Oofy Security App adds cloud disclaimer. It should have had all along that they're actually uploading things. And this is just one of those typical disasters of these companies. They're extremely poorly written. They're not secure. Someone found all the API keys. All you know, They got their hacker fingers out and pressed F12, could see everything. I forget the security researcher that poked at it. Uh... Where is that gentleman's name that did the research? There we go. Reacher discovers security flaws in Ufi cameras again. I don't know. I just kind of expect these cameras to be awful. Um, and and to no one's surprise that when they poke at them at all, they're awful. So, yeah. And the same thing goes with the Hikvision or any of those. They're terrible on security. My answer is never give them internet. The problem is if you give people a network cable... And, and tell it to get on a network, somehow it'll get on the internet because a lot of the lowest bidders aren't always um, the, the best high-quality installers. Do you place your camera that is directly accessible to the internet behind HE Proxy you just put forward? Uh, I have no cameras accessible to the internet. I have a Synology accessible to the internet. Much like requiring Synology hard drives for some models, requiring Synology cameras might be a thing. No, I don't think so. Uh, Synology actually prides themselves on it, but I'm willing to bet, and I got to look this up. I think Synology, if you buy their cameras, you don't need to buy their licenses. So their cameras are going to come with a license, but they'll still let you use the other ones. You should do a demo of your setup of cameras where you make a dedicated camera setup open the internet. Maybe put a room in your office or something that is low security so you can try it. <laughs> no. Uh, are you planning to make a video on how you added Synology and Unify to your Zabbix monitoring? I do not have Synology and Unify in my Zabbix monitoring, so I, um, I'm i not going to make a video on it. Yeah. Oofy in the cloud gate. Um, The hookup did a video on it. I want to watch it because Linus said he was wrong in the video, if I remember right. So I was trying to follow the back and forth and I didn't want to get, I don't, I didn't want to just watch it in video form. I actually prefer to read. Um, But I have seen Linus blasted Yuffie, but then if someone correct me if I'm wrong, didn't Linus say the hookup was wrong um, as well? I I was trying to find the whole um, back and forth on there. Can you get license plate detection? Yes. Uh, the DVA models have license plate detection. And if you type in Synology DVA on my YouTube channel, you'll find a video I did on it. But yes, you can do license plate detection. Too many things open. Actually, I think I can... I've erased them. Oh, license plate report. When did I do the video? I probably saw some data in here. Maybe not. I must have erased it all. Because I can't remember when I did the video. <laughs> I have a whole video where I show how the license plate detection works on here. Oh, yeah. Keep detection results for 28 days. So I've already purged them out of uh, this system. But, yeah, it does it. Linus did two videos on the Land Show clips. Linus did being saying, Yuffie messed up, then hook up correct, then hook up corrected Linus, and Linus responded back and corrected some more stuff. Okay. Like I said, there was a lot of corrections going on. I would have been fine to read all this, but I don't know where to read it at. Um, and I didn't feel like watching a bunch of videos. So... Interesting, though. My answer, like I said, and is don't put these things on the Internet. Like, I never trust these cameras to be on the Internet. That's just my opinion. Like, they shouldn't be on the Internet. Like, that's that's where I see the problem. If these things are on the Internet, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, there we go. So let me... Share this tab instead. I've talked about this before. I've got videos on this. 
look, here's the one IP address that's allowed. We block the firewall ports and services, 1022, 10043, 3080. We allow the Synology, the one device on there, and that's it. Those That's all that's allowed to be on the internet. Um, that allows access to my Synology and or allows the Synology to get online, and none of the cameras can talk to the internet. It's a simple rule, um, and it's it's how I think any NVR should be set up. Whether it's a whether those cameras are Amcrest because Amcrest wasn't on the list, but Amcrest and Hikvision and uh, what's the other one? They don't look much different from each other, and I'm willing to bet they're all made and the firmware is written probably by the same companies in China writing all of these. So, I mean, yeah. Did you place the technology to expose the internet behind HE proxy or just port forward with the ACL or did you do a different security approach? I just port forwarded uh, the Synology port and let the quick connect um, do work. Now you can do it without port forwarding and without a VPN, but it goes into relay mode. Uh, they actually support relaying with Synology. The downside is relaying is painfully slow. Uh, so watching videos off of a relay, it kind of sucks. So is there a security problem with this? Yes. If, if, and this is the prerequisites, if someone finds my open port for Synology and also there's a flaw that Synology doesn't patch or has a patch and I don't patch it. If someone finds a flaw and is able to inject something into that port, they could possibly break my Synology or get into my network. Where would they get? Well, they can't get any further than a Synology, and the Synology doesn't have access to go anywhere else. So it doesn't, it, it's not going to allow them all over my uh, network. So it's, it, it's not the biggest deal. Don't even give your camera uh, a default gateway. Probably a good idea. Access point recommendation for a uh, 10, 80 square feet house, small family. Um, I like the LRs, but it all depends what, what's in the, I like the Unify access point LRs, but they're all, they're all pretty good. Um, it all depends what's in your walls. You can, you can have a really small space, but if there's something in your walls blocking the Wi-Fi, then you got something in the walls blocking your Wi-Fi. It's more about what's in the walls than anything else. So many things we talked about here. Let me start sh closing all these windows. Yeah, the Yuffie stuff, though. Wow. Actually, I should pull this up. This is the... Uh... Actually, we'll pull it up here. This is the security researcher that actually showed the problems. Well, they were showing how they were able to pull out path things from the cloud and access okay, them with the keys that he's able to find in there. The phone, home base. Yeah, you can you can read all this. This so is the original like security it. research that let everyone doing it. I. I'm almost surprised. I think this is the big thing with a lot of these cameras. Not enough people have poked at them because they're, they're really common. And everyone just kind of knows they're bad. There's also no bug bounties um, listed on them. So if you ran around and go, Tom, I found a security bypass on all these Hikvision cameras. People will go, okay, you're surprised. Like what would people really do with that information? <laughs> so that's, um, that's uh, one of the reasons that, I don't know, I just expect them to be horrible. Um, and when people act surprised that they are, I'm like, uh, why? <laughs> uh, I do realize, and no one pointed it out yet, uh, I I was working on things and I did not fix the rules for that Synology. Technically, that Synology has access partially to another network. Um, I, I will feel free to leave that comment down there as I know someone may be watching this afterwards that we'd be pointing it out so the ufi stuff reminds me of the business practice of every isp in social media <laughs> 
We're not doing it until we're caught doing it. Is that what you're trying to say? What was that other company that got sued over that? All your networks. Well, there's a series of rules on my other networks that stop other things from coming through. But yeah, I that, I actually had just changed that rule um, because I was testing something and I need to change it back. <laughs> I'm aware. I there, There's a reason that was pulled up. Uh, I, it was because I was it came out of a question I was having and a challenge I was having with hyper backup. Uh, I built a min IO server locally. And then I used that system to do a backup because I wanted to see how the surveillance backed up. So I opened it up for access to do that. Um, that was a project I got. I get caught in these little like figuring this out type things. And I'll just turn a bunch of things on. Then I later back them all back out to the way they were. But I will point out that I'm aware so if if that Synology problem exists at this moment and then you could figure out a way to pivot, then you could figure out a way to at least ping some of the other subnets and see some of the other devices. But there's a lot of security uh, on top of that in there. So oh, I do not like VPN sponsors. Yeah, the I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of them. Everyone gets excited about them. I don't know. If you're hiding your torrenting, that's one thing, but I don't know about the rest of it. What else do we want to talk about? I think we're in the errata part of it. I've talked a lot about cameras today and everything else. What are some of the other topics? Because if not, I, I have, I'm have i going to go play back to playing with the 45 drive system. And uh, I actually need to finish setting some things up on it. <laughs> I, I have some actual things I have to get done uh, so I can finish the videos so I can ship these to where their final uh, destination will be. Uh, what was I going to do? Is it permissions? I think it's 777, man. We'll just go there. Apply recursively. Update. Okay, it doesn't save them like that. That's what I was curious about. Hmm. Oh, snapshots. I need I need a plan with some replication tasks. Retention time. Five days retention. I will just say interval time. One hour. Yeah. So we did this. We'll do it every five minutes. There we go. So retention time, three days, every five minutes. We try to change it to one. I'm destroying all this anyways. This is all just stuff I'm playing with. Day. That's a lot, but that's okay. That's the goal. Have it doing a lot, and then we'll start building some snapshots on there. All right, so that's doing something. When are we getting the 45 drives videos? Probably by Saturday. Uh, what do you consider a decent lifespan for tech devices? It, it varies by the devices. Uh, do your large business accounts use password managers? Yes. Oh, I didn't set the one bit for owner. Yeah. Yes, I've heard of Uptime Kuma, but I don't use it. I mean, I'm aware of it. I've I've played with it. I just don't really have anything to monitor with it. Uh, active backup business, fail silently, certificate on NAS expires, any suggestion to attack. I can make a small program to parse the log on the user, uh, but not ideal. Yeah, I've noticed that. I I think that's something they should fix. I don't have an answer for it. Um, you just know because the backups aren't working. <laughs> My one of the problems I've had with Synology, and I've told them this, this is something I've talked to Synology engineers about. I don't use their backup system commercially because we can't monitor it at all the client sites. So we have too many client sites. It's it'd be too much of a headache to try to do that. Um, even you know, just in general monitoring active backup, the way you monitor it is tedious. And you look and say, hey, did this work? Let me switch to one of the screens here. Um, I just don't understand why they don't have 
a better notification system in it um, or a way to manage it in our cloud service so you can see like multiple sites uh, running it. I, I don't know. It's one of those weird things. Like, here's a success. This one was back dumped on 12.6. My computer system, my gaming system has not been on since 11.30. So I know that's why this one hasn't been backed up. But you're right. If it fails, it fails quietly. And you just got to go back in and say yes to the certificate. But it's kind of a kind of an annoying problem uh, to have to go do that on the endpoints. They also don't have any, like, auto update for the agent. You have to go in there and go to update agent. Like, you select the device and say, update the agent if there's an update. I, I don't know why they can't just automate that. Like, check a box and make it do it. Um, yeah, they last a long time. Hard drives, 50,000 hours, yeah. It really depends on just how much hammering there was on the drives. Yeah, they're working on monitoring via Active Insight. That's what I told them they should be doing. I I, I met with them like, oh man, it's pushing a year ago uh, that I met with them uh, and and told them like I laid out how it how I thought it could be best done. So, uh, what are your thoughts on white label drivers for refurb? Uh, either a better risk. I generally, because we're doing commercial installs, I go with the better drives. But if you don't have the budget for it, I don't really have a good answer for that one. So I haven't tested them to tell you. Uh, do you run anything to do image deployments? We really don't do image deployments. Not directly network related, but have you been following the UFI drama, security drama, cloud drama? Yes. And I, I brought your name up because you got mentioned on Linus. So uh, I'm assuming this is the actual channel to hook up. Uh, but yeah, I, I was... Confused because I noticed some back and forth. I did not watch your video on it. I did not watch, but I seen people talking about Linus's video. Um, what I did do was read the security researcher and the short video that they did. So I understand where the problem is with the cameras, uh, with the Eufy and how uh, bad they are. I just didn't have time to sort through the other videos that you do, uh, that you did and Linus did talking about it. So yeah, I, I mean, the disaster of it's pretty bad. That's for sure. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, uh, that it, that's what it's all supposed to be as part of an MSP dashboard analogy. analogies. The, I, this is what I kept telling him. I said, you know, I said, if you want me to sell more Synology boxes, um, I got to have a way to monitor them. And they have active backup or uh, the active dashboard. We have a lot of clients using them, but I, they, their dashboard doesn't allow me to watch the backups on an individual basis. That's where the problem is. I don't know when they're going to get that. All my drives are shucked easy stores. Yeah. Hey, it works for a lot of people. It fits your budget because for a while there, shuck and drives, man, got you some really good deals. One of my favorite cases was someone removed the X bits from the permission directories and they couldn't figure out why they couldn't access files in the directory. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> I know the hookup, his ears must have been burning because he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, and that's the thing. Um, Linus saying port forward is not a security risk. That's what I said. I, I don't have time to watch all the videos. As much as I'm a video creator, I'm a voracious reader. I read a lot of the things I consume, um, like security stuff. As a matter of fact, what I, I actually was laughing. I posted a video on Reddit, um, and someone said, that Tom guy, all he does is read manuals and make videos about it. I was like, I replied right away. I'm like, you found my secret. That's literally what I do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I just IRTFM and then I make a video. <laughs> uh, permissions are best managed in file sharing in Houston. Yeah. A few minutes ago, I go back and check once term. Yeah, I didn't say anything bad about you. I just said I was confused because I don't know who was right and who was wrong. I just know I seen like, I think I was reading it on Reddit and flipping through it. And there was like, there was a, like this controversy back and forth. And all I know is I, the security researcher that I read that and said, wow, that's a mess. So how is Sanji backup verification uh, screenshot might upgrade? Uh, there is no backup verification screenshot that I'm aware of. Uh, I lock forwarded address to source IP. Um, it's how I secure that mess. I, I said earlier, don't give your cameras access to the internet. Can't be too careful when you shuck drive. You have the issues uh, with some NAS units. 
You know, I'm curious. I'm scrolling back a little bit because I'm just curious what something someone said. Maybe I should screenshot it. Someone said I was mentioned on a gaming channel. And it made me think because my son plays a lot of games. Maybe he knows or maybe he's the reason I got mentioned. <laughs> Anyways, it just popped in my head. I forgot to look at what the gaming channel was that someone mentioned. But they also didn't say why I was mentioned, which also made me curious. Oh, well. Um, oh, well. Not too worried about it. Uh, is TrueNAS Scale ready for production? What are you doing with TrueNAS Scale? That's the question. Um, the fact is, with TrueNAS Scale, to this day, and we'll log into it real quick. So TrueNAS Scale, running a virtualization, here's my Ubuntu running on it. For whatever reason, you still can't ping the IP address of the machine. I don't know why. So that part's not ready for production. Um, I'm I well nothing's changed dramatically but the way you rebuild and reset up apps in here I thought that was strange. Ooh, update available so let's go ahead and update this. Let's see how this goes. But I don't run we don't have any clients that need applications running. From a storage standpoint, it seems to work fine. So from storage, yes, but I don't know about the rest. Uh, air versus helium for long-term usage. I don't know. I don't, I haven't read any reports on that. Okay. Next lander is three, four uh, giant. Okay. Interesting. Let's see. Active backup business has the option to do a screenshot when testing a backup in there for a couple months. Interesting. I didn't know they added that. I agree with this statement completely. It can be done securely, but I think generally people not uh, are generally at the people setting up VLANs. That's the problem with a lot of the consumer stuff, even the enterprise stuff. People putting all the cameras on the same network as everything else is not an uncommon thing. Uh, next center was a podcast. I'll shoot you a message with a link in the video. Cool. Thank you. Uh, setting up a lab, but if it's still only uh, beta, I'd like to be sure. I mean, it all depends on what you're going to do. If you just need it for storage, it works. Uh, I don't know what you're trying to do in your lab. That's the big, that's really what it comes down to. Because, like, this seemed to work. That update worked. So let's open up... Um, See, that's, wait, what did we just update? So this update worked. I think this is why I just clicked update on. Yeah, based on the gap. <laughs> I, so the, I mean, it didn't break. It didn't explode. Cool. Uh, but I guess that varies with the application, and the applications are only as good as the people supporting it. Greetings from Germany, and thank you for liking the videos. That's awesome. I just realized I have the StreamYard logo at the top there. Put my logo back. <laughs> oh, fun stuff. What else are we talking about here? Lots of true NAS stuff. Lots of true NAS stuff. Share this instead. Let's. Uh, what else needs to be updated? Oh, next cloud. Let's update next cloud. Upgrade. Will it explode? Will it work? I actually don't have any. I have it set up, but I'm not doing anything with it. I just have it set up so I can see if it breaks if one of these updates. Kind of a curiosity. My former employer had it all on flat network, selling internet access. I'm taking a production server's client's camera locks. Yeah. There's, there's just so many things that are 
broken places. It takes a long time. Uh, security was so much an afterthought with much of the technology we developed that bringing it all forward, securing and locking it is hard. And some of the people still don't like they started in tech and they plateaued pretty quickly on how much they were willing to learn. And that's where they stayed <laughs> and they still work in tech at the same knowledge. Um, yes. <laughs> totally not tech related. But what is your favorite band? Um, I think it's an interesting question because the music I listen to is just random. I don't even have a favorite band. I don't go to concerts. Uh, we we were joking, though. I was at an MISEC meeting uh, last night, uh, which is Michigan Security. Uh, they're doing some things. I want to help out and participate with them. But uh, back to what was said there, we were talking about, like, what was the last concert? And the last concert I even been to was 20, more than, yeah, about 20, over 20 years ago now. Uh, and I was joking because I still have ringing in my ears because of being at Ozfest and being at Metallica uh, back when I was like 18 years old and it was too loud and I didn't wear earplugs. But I don't really um, listen to a lot of music. So it's not, it, I, there's there's usually some random repetitive sound going in the background, like some random techno with no lyrics that I just play, not because I love it, but it stops the ringing in my ears. <laughs> So or, or it overrides it. It's kind of like the equivalent of turning your radio up uh, in a car that makes some weird noise that you don't want to take to the mechanic to get fixed. <laughs> That's I don't know how to fix the ring in my ears. So I just make sure there's some ambient noise going on. <laughs> I use the combo of videos from Tom Crosstalk and hookup to decide what cameras to go with and isolate them on a VLAN, save me some equipment and isolate the cams completely. That's awesome. Yeah. Hookup's got a lot of great videos on uh, the different cameras. I believe I did watch some of those videos uh, they did, or he did, uh, regarding which ones I ended up picking. So there, um, it, it, there's a lot to do in cameras. It's a, it's a lot of work putting all that uh, together. I can, I know as a content creator, the effort that goes into putting all those videos together. <laughs> uh, any biking as of late? Nah, it's a little cold here in Michigan. So with uh, winter being here, not as much motorcycle riding. Let's see, it, yeah, I thought I had a picture. It was snowing the other day, and I thought I took a picture, but no snow pictures. But yeah, it's winter, so it's not it's not been pleasant enough out to do any of the other stuff. The the outdoor activities that I like doing. If you had a 60 plus camera system needed to run on a Windows server, uh should you buy one big Dell server and drives inside? I wouldn't run a 60 camera system on a Windows server. Um, I wouldn't even want to support that project. I mean, I guess if you're running Exact Vision, so I can't say we don't. Exact Vision is probably one of the way we, I think we have at least one. It's a co-managed deal. The internal IT team babysits it. Um, but I think you can run Exact Vision on a Windows server, but it also runs on a Linux server, which is probably better. Separate NAS for storage, I think, might be, um, I don't know, it depends. If you get a big Dell system with a uh, good Dell array, but a separate NAS for storage, probably not a horrible idea. Everything on one network with UPnP, what could possibly go wrong, as Steve Gibson would say? You are correct. <laughs> good answer. Yeah, the music one's kind of a weird one for me. I'm not, hey, when I was younger, I liked it, but I don't know. It somehow just fell out of my head and never, I never think about it. I don't. I don't even have an interest in going in a concert or anything, which is weird. I mean, I, I don't have any problem with people who do. Lots of my friends are really into it. I see them still going to concerts and I'm like, hey, cool that that band's still playing. But have fun. <laughs> are you involved with the local hacking competitions? High school teams are becoming uh, popular here in Florida. You know, yes is what I'm trying to do with some of the local ones. We've had trouble getting groups together Uh it's not been easy. We started to get a couple DC 313 group. We started putting that together. That's the DEF CON and then the area code. So DEF CON 313 group. We started that in 2018 and 2019. Uh, and after the events of 2020 till today, it kind of fell apart. And it was, it's just been really difficult finding a tech community here in Detroit. It It's just a gap we have. Uh, and we've not been able to, for whatever reason, like put a strong 
regular meeting community together. So the goal is yes, but haven't really found the group yet. But that's what we were trying to do last night. Uh, There's a lot of people that showed up at this event for MISEC last night. There's probably 30 or 40 people there. And I said, hey, I'd like to help participate. So that was cool. And, uh, you know, we're just kind of going to see where that goes. I totally understand I have horrible tinnitus. Uh, many years, rock bands, lots of concerts, uh, competition star stereos, and owning a roller rink, ears are shot. Yeah, I was the car stereo guy too. So yeah, I get it. Can you do a complete NAS setup uh, to turn from scratch, including this items needed based on what setup is not overkill? Yeah, I'm gonna, I want to wait for the new TrueNAS scale uh, that'll be released in December because I will do the video with TrueNAS scale. I've done one on Core um, and the video will be interchangeable between scale and core. So you can go, you can do either one, but I'll probably focus on scale. Cause I know that's where more people want. And I have so far liked the, uh, what is it called here? Uh, throw this back in there. This is the, does it have its name in there? Oh, I think it's called Bluefin. Uh, this is the true dance scale Bluefin version though they have the version number here but not the name but it's uh 22 i'm at rc1 on here i don't think there's any updates yet yeah true net scale bluefin release candidate i test release candidates and give you guys information um because i back everything up and if it explodes whatever i can restore <laughs> uh that's why i always have a fan running so i can't hear the ringing yep I need to update my TrueNAS 12.13 for my next project. Yes. Uh, what bikes do I have? Um, where's that? That's my motorcycle I ride. It's a uh, Yamaha Super Tenere. That's really... The, I have another smaller Honda, but... Um, it's not that my usual is that super tenere retailers that use access cameras on access software, uh, needed hardware. Yeah. The access, the access ones at least aren't on the ban list. So if I remember correctly to hook up show damn crest dual camera, which is really nice for coverage, uh, but along more zoom. Yes. 1200 cameras and 14 servers. Awesome. You should check out uh, AFA Cyber Patriot is very popular around here. Oh, cool. Does Unify have an option to place wireless devices and stick them based on access without the need for a radius server? It's not natively built in. Um, there's no native option for it, like built into the Unify controller. You have to use something. If, if you want to do the whole VLAN switching, you'll have to add more to the Unify to get that working. We have trouble getting traditionally introverted people together. Isn't that the truth? Core scale performance uh, stability core if you aren't able to figure out how to run your own Docker host on another VM. Buy a good pair of earplugs, especially concerts and clubs often. Yeah. The dual cameras I looked at are the uh, Dahua OEM, Real Link, Uniview, and Hikvision OEM. I prefer Hikvision over the Dahua. And I'll agree with this. Access cameras are good. People ask me about them a lot. And I'm like, they're good. They're just like four times, five times more expensive uh, than, you know, like a Hikvision or an Amcrest. So uh, it comes down to price. <laughs> that's that's really what you're asking is, you know, how much? And uh, the how much is quite a bit different with those. So it's a uh, quite a bit more. What was I else? Something else I was thinking about. I've already forgot what that is. I have the pictures of that, that, that. I don't know. I think there's something. Hey, awesome. Thank you for the donation, Michael. Update on business technicalities. Yes, good news. We're wait, um by probably tomorrow. Soon, we've recorded the videos. The editor is processing them. More videos are coming on business technicalities. Uh, that is happening. We're putting people together. I, I put plans in motion. So, yes, that will get updated soon. Um, so, yes, I'm excited to say that. That's 
Today, they should have earplugs filters. Look, in the 90s, we were just, we weren't thinking about earplugs or anything like that. We're just going to the Metallica concert. Man, it was fun. <laughs> the camera's produced by the Access Powers over the Allied Companies. I get the joke. Ah, <laughs> uh, Yes. Greetings from Switzerland. True NAS versus Synology NAS. Which one do you recommend for your clients? It starts with use case. I have to know the use case before I can do a recommendation. Um, I need to know if you need to use any of these Synology apps or you just need the storage only. True NAS is a wonderful box when it comes to storage only for iSCSI, for NFS. It works great. But if people need all those different applications, like Active Backup, which is, I think, a wonderful application, if you want to use all those, well, it's kind of a no-brainer. If they, if if you're looking for a backup solution that you want to manage yourself internally, I think Active Backup is a great choice, which means you're going to end up buying a Synology for that. Because sometimes people say, hey, my goal with my NAS is to back up all the workstations here at my office. I'm like, go with Synology. It's a better solution than TrueNAS because with TrueNAS, you'll have to find a third-party solution. Now, if you find some third-party tool you want to use, insert name of your favorite tool that can connect to the shares on there, that does make a good solution, but now you're buying two different things. So it always starts with solve for the solution. Uh, that's how we look at those. So we end up recommending a lot of both. We sell a lot of Synology. We sell a lot of TrueNAS. Uh, it starts with the question of, you know, let's talk about what your goals are. And that's how we come up with the solution that we'll start recommending. You know, it's one of those... Um, Debates I've had a few times. I, I brought this up the other day. People are talking about like VCIO and things like that, um, which is the idea that you as an uh, outside IT vendor, you're a virtual chief information officer for a company. But I've never liked that idea from the concept of your VCIO. But do you recommend anything that you don't resell? Because if you're also the one selling the solution, you're not exactly impartial. Um, we have been brought in uh, on occasion specifically to never resell something, but only consult. So this is something I've done from time to time over the years where people bring me in. I'm not the one that's doing anything other than consulting on a solution. To me, that is a VCIO because I'm not the one that's making a commission. So my product recommendations are product recommendations, not something I'm going to make a commission on selling. Obviously, my product recommendations are going to be biased by I don't recommend things I have never used because I may not understand them very well, but I'm a reasonably well-read individual when it comes to all the different technologies out there. Obviously, you can't know them all, but I know enough of the popular ones out there that I can make decision points on there. But if you are working in that position and you are also the one selling the solution, it suddenly seems like a deep conflict of interest if you're doing that. That's just the way I see it. I don't really see a big way around it. So uh, yeah, just one of those little things. Uh Active backup over WAN seems to work fine. Any counter arguments? I don't know that I would run it over WAN. I would run it over a VPN. Uh, so as long as you're running it over a VPN, I think you're probably fine. As long as you have the bandwidth. I mean, anything really comes down to bandwidth. So, hey, your channel brought me into IT. T-S-Y-M. Is that, did, did you misspell my name or is there someone else you tried to say? Because I don't see someone with that name. I don't know if you're talking to me or someone else. Is there another person in here? I don't see it. Thank you if it's me. And, uh, well, I'm happy if it's the other person, too. <laughs> I, I'm happy to see more people in IT. <laughs> we'll just leave it. We'll leave it at that. I'm just happy. <laughs> oh, what else? What else? What else am I going to poke at here? The Synology. You know... One of the other things about this analogy is the, uh, can I sh pull this up here? There we go. I'm trying to see if it shows anything personal. Actually, it just shows our first names. That's cool. I like this feature of Synology a lot too. I probably should do a follow-up video on this. Um, oh, TSM, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, I'm, you young kids these days using these weird acronyms and stuff. <laughs> uh, good day, Australia. I've been watching your videos for a while, and now I'm finally bit the bullet, built my own PF Sense box. Well, congratulations. 
and tinkering with the following along with your videos have been so much fun. Awesome. I it's fun to get the passion involved in it because you get more excited to do it. It just becomes this constant curiosity. You end up uh obsessing over like how this rule works or how you can get this implemented. And that just makes it kind of fun. Uh, what I was mentioning with Synology though, is this feature here. Uh, I think this is just really slick. Um, this is the active backup for all the different things we have in our uh, Google. So this is uh, right now there's 47 gigs backed up. I'm, I'm the largest because I don't delete emails. Um, actually, let me look what, how many emails are in my inbox right now, but I should probably delete more of them, but there's, uh, 321,000, 321,000, uh, emails in there. So with that being said, that's why Tom's got, uh, 47 gigs of mostly emails, LTS office. We got 11.3 gigs of our office documents. Uh, Brett's the sales guy, Kyle, Eric, and Steve. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, backups. But this is it works really well uh, for doing all the backups for your. This backs up my Google Workspace. Uh, it's a neat feature that Synology has that I like quite a bit. I got my job, first job because of you today. I set up two new servers. Well, congratulations. That is awesome. Uh, definitely. That is great. I have no idea how they're giving away active back without licensing. I don't either, but it's amazing because it works really well uh, for backing all that up. So that's, that's one of the things I think is really neat is the fact that they have that is uh, that ability to back up either office 365 or back up some, uh, all of our Google documents and everything else. And, you know, even though Google has not suffered uh, the same fate, even though they're cloud and everything else, I mean, globally, they have not had an outage or a takedown that has caused a mass deletion of data. I think Google's got some of the um, best security engineers out there working on a lot of this stuff to help prevent it. Um, that doesn't mean there couldn't be something individually happening to an account that I shouldn't have a backup of all of my emails, all my documents, and all the important things that we use Google Google Business for. Um, so uh, Synology makes that easy to do. Like it, it's it also I have lots of storage on my Synology, so I'm not worried about it. Like I have enough storage that as I grow my Google cloud, I think about how much my cloud bill might be, but I don't have to think about how much my Synology bill or whether or not I'll be able to back up all of that data because storing it again in another cloud service is uh, compoundingly expensive. As a suggestion, when you do videos about cameras, can you show them up and running, especially at night? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I even do that when I'm talking about my Synology system, I will make sure I, and I covered this in some of the videos that I did. So let me go ahead and which one is it? Like I, and I made sure when I played back the recordings, I actually made sure I played back the night recordings as well. Uh, so people could see how things looked, even if it's a night recording. So even right here, I mean, this is this is actually right now. This is just a few minutes ago. You can see my truck is really dirty. But yeah, because you can't see that this is there's no lights on. That's why these look so bright. Uh, this is just the IR from the camera doing that. But something kind of novel is my front porch. Uh, this is the night vision color camera. And I cover this in my review of this. Uh, this is the night vision color. So there's the ability it has to see color in the dark is really impressive. Uh, what is it? Front porch. Trying to find if there's one of these with something interesting. But these night shots are actually pretty impressive how uh, how good they look. 
Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to probably do an updated video on it just to say it's been another year. The cameras are still working great. <laughs> Exos or Iron Wolf? Uh, it depends which one's on sale. Ah, uh, yes. The Unify Video Days. The actual camera mounted and running? I guess. I usually, I think there's pictures of them I have. Get a hard-coded timestamp on that file, Tom. They are required in some districts to be used in court. Oh, that's a good point. I wonder what uh, our rules are here in Michigan for them. That's a, yeah. That's a, that's a fair point. I probably should have brought that up because I, I actually don't. I turned it off because I don't like it. <laughs> but you're right. I'll have to find out what the rules are in Michigan. Um, that's a really good point you made there. I've added two really... Uh, two real link duo two synology only take one license, which is great because itself I have two cameras that stitch together. SMR, CMR. Yeah, like that's even a debate. That how long ago is that debate that happened? That was a little while ago, wasn't it? Um <laughs> I am laughing about something that um, I just got an email about the, I just, uh, someone argued with me on October of 2020 and I just got the notice and today is December 8th of 2022. This is a dispute from 2020 and they're just now solving it. This is, I remember this person. We've only had like one person dispute our charges. Uh, it was so dumb. And I don't know. I think it's funny that they finally they finally uh, took it off of my account as a dispute. Apparently, they found the person as crazy as we did. <laughs> um. When did that article come out? Man, I'm trying to remember how old that article was when the CMR incident happened. Was it only 2020? I feel like it was before 2020. I'm trying to just find the um, articles from it. Someone remembers the year the first article came out on that. That'd be interesting. Uh, the WD debate was two or three years ago. Now those all the driving furniture are clear about what they're buying. Yeah, was it two or three years ago now? I can't remember exactly how long ago it was. I wouldn't use a QNAP because of their security problems. So I I tend to steer clear of the QNAPs. Um, if there's any further videos on OpenStack, they're going to be on Jay's channel, not mine. Jay uses some of the OpenStack stuff, so I don't. Hi, big fan from Spain. Do you think Synology camera licenses are worth their price? You know, I don't know what it costs in Spain, but the U.S. dollar of it, I think, is reasonable uh, compared to some of the other systems. Like, if you use some of the commercial systems, the licenses are not just one time like the Air Force analogy. They're perpetual, or I mean, they're not perpetual. They're renewal. Uh, so you have their subscriptions that you're buying for licenses. The Synology ones are perpetual, so they're a one-time purchase. And they're transferable to new Synology. So if I were to take the licenses I have and move them to a new Synology, I can do that. So I find them worth it. Um, but I don't know if there's an exchange rate problem getting them in Spain that would make them less worth it to you. And I don't also don't have a lot of alternatives. So yeah, the, the, the whole QNAP NASTA boggles are funny. They're just poor security on them. Uh, don't expose your QNAP to the internet. That's just that's just where the problems come in. I, I don't have any other advice beyond that. I have too many things open. What else was I going to pull up? Hey, I will wind this down. I am going to go do something else. Um, as much as I enjoy live streams, I don't know. Uh, should I just keep marathoning the live stream? I kind of want to go get a beer. <laughs> 
is my my voice will start giving out because I've been talking so much. I love answering questions, though. Don't get me wrong here. <laughs> um, don't the Synology Surveillance Stations come with four? No, they come with two out of the box. So you get two licenses by default with them, except for the DVA models. The DVA models come with more, but I don't remember how many more that is. Live streaming makes you tired. It's a lot. Beer and a new hot sauce. You know, I wonder if I can get my son to bring me a beer. <laughs> Go get a beer. We'll wait. Get that beer and keep talking. Yeah. Let me message my son. Let's see what he's doing. He's upstairs. He can bring me a beer. If he he's not on my live stream, so he's probably doing something else. He's probably playing a game. See if he'll because I'm almost out of water. So Jaden Animation is doing a pressure live stream of charity. Maybe you should do the same. Um, I don't know. I don't mind donating to charity. I don't know if I want to do a perpetual live stream for charity. <laughs> I don't do well. I just get loopy after X number of hours. Here, I messaged my son about ringing me a beer. Is there any hot sauce uh, worth having other than that one? Oh, yeah. You know, that's the thing. I'm not going to lie, man. This, uh, this black truffle sauce is really good. So if you haven't found that one, that's another good one. You can see the, the firewall behind me for all the different things. Ah, uh, here's another question, because do I have a way to open the beer? Because my son probably won't know to open the beer. I thought I had, because it's, I'm looking for this. I should have just ran upstairs and got the beer. Oh, <laughs> I have the perfect thing. I have the perfect thing here. Hold on. You paying me? I have a 45 dries beer opener. You paying me for yeah. this? Sure. How much you paying me? I don't know. I have I have a question though for you. Yes. Do you know do I know who um hold on? Uh next slander show. Uh, the CBSI games giant bomb went what? Yeah, oh, I don't know if you knew who they were. No, okay, okay, all right, cool. Never mind, then. never mind. Then. Yep, okay. we'll do the craft computing thing, right? <laughs> like Jeff does. <laughs> I love that I have a 45 drives one handy for this. This is this is perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Yeah, you watching your gaming thing? Hmm? It's not on yet. Oh, okay, it's, it's not on yet. Late. It's only 6.40. Okay. we we'll watch it in a little while. All right. Well, cool. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Let's see. What do we have? I'm going to catch up on the comments here. Uh, if I pull old sound, mouse sounds, you can ask and put into a new one. Uh, does it keep the data? I'm not 100. I think so, but I'm not 100% on that one. Craft your heating beer stream. I just get loopy, he said. So did Jaden. <laughs> it's half the fun. <laughs> uh, Synology data, uh, data sheets mentioned max VPN connection, but that cap can be edited through SSH and add more RAM support VPN. I don't know. I've never used Synology for a VPN. Linda's makes good stuff all the way back. To, yeah. The, all the Melinda's Melinda has a whole good collection of sauces uh, that I really like. Um, Trying to think because these are. Like we have a few of them. Like this is the Melinda's. Um, I seen this one here. This is the honey habanero, mango habanero. We were having a sauce day at my office, and we just started lining them up. 
Um, that that's the thing we do sometimes. So many sauces. What else? Uh, and of course, this is where I go. You go to the Pepper Palace to get all kinds of new sauces. I make my pilgrimage there to go try new things. If you got a strong table, you can use the edge of your table as the bottle opener. I do. This is a, uh, I think I've shown my uh, office before, but yes, that's definitely a thing. Nice hoodie. Ah, uh, yes. My son and his colorful hoodies. Do you know the muffin man? <laughs> what beer are we drinking this evening? Oh, I didn't really show that, did I? Uh, this is the... I uh, put it for my face. There we go. Ele Elysian Space Dust. I really love... This is a personal favorite. They don't make a dedicated two-and-a-half drive chassis. They don't make a uh, SAS chassis. And they're priced like new Enterprise rather than used. They price her like new enterprise hardware rather than use. I don't know. I like them and I haven't found those to be limitations of them. They, and I think they actually have now a two and a half inch uh, drive chassis. I think they, they do make one. Uh, you have to kind of, I think it's, I don't know if it's on their website, but they make one that is two and a half inch. Did you show the sauce fridge? Oh, um, I don't know if I have a picture of the sauce in our maybe i do oh here here's a picture there's the fridge um this is the morning after sauce that someone sent me from australia but you can see our whole door at our fridge is nothing but sauces yeah we we have a lot of hot sauce on there uh bell's Bure brewery i don't uh that's in Kalamazoo. That's roughly an hour from me. I knew it wasn't too close, but it's about an hour away to get to Bell's. I love Bell's Two Hearted. Huge favorite of that one, too. Uh, Bell's Two Hearted and this uh, Elysian Space Dust, both are a couple of my favorite beers that, like, I try other ones, but I my default is I just go back to those all the time. These are, I typed in sauces in my Google, and this is what came up. Uh, there's a lot in here. There's my sauce wall, which has all the dry powder stuff on it too. You can probably tell there, there might be an addiction problem I have, right? <laughs> and there's me and my son doing the extreme regret. Dr. Asburns. This is good stuff too. I finished that one. That one's empty now. So is this one. This was a really good one. That's why I took a picture of it so we could order some more. Uh, Chairman Yao's scor scorpion pepper sauce. So that was a that was a tasty one. I think we put in everything. These are good for potatoes. I make potatoes with uh, the ghostly garlic. That's potatoes behind me, man. Just pour it on there. And anything by Bravado Sp Spice Company. All the Bravado Spice Company sauces are really good. I just got back into uh, beer once I was in Bahamas. Now I need to try all the new craft beers. Yes. Yeah, once you get into all the... Uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. I mean, I was never a beer drinker when I was younger. Wasn't really my thing. Um, I got into craft beers when I was older, and I'm like, oh, this is my thing. Like, I like this. This tastes good. I like scotch. I like whiskey. And I like... Um, really hoppy or IPA beers or smoky ones. I don't like sweet or fruity beers as much. Like I'll take a sip and I'm like, eh, but I don't, I wouldn't go out of my way to buy one. Oberon is good too. Uh, Synology photos or Google photos. I use both. Um, Google photos just kills it when it comes to their AI detection. I back up anything that's important to me on my Synology backup, like vacation photos and things like that. Or maybe if I don't want things on my Google Photos, uh, if if I ever do anything personal, I wouldn't use it on my Google Photos. My Google Photos, for the most part, I can share with people because 
it's just that it's impersonal. So I use Synology for personal photo storage. If I take photos of things uh, and I use Google for, I mean, I don't want it public, but if it got public, it would not be uh, damaging. Matter of fact, if you looked at a lot of what my photos are in Google Photos, um, it's me taking 20 selfies that are for YouTube thumbnails. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, and I don't bother backing that up to Synology. So yeah, the Synology stuff is like, um, my, my important things on there, my personal things go on to Synology. Although I did see something, I didn't know these were still in existence. I found, I was, I was like, wait, those are red boxes. I thought those were gone. Apparently they're not. So, uh, that's the thing still, if anyone was wondering, they still have red box DVD rentals. Oh, here. Someone will laugh about this. Oh, I'm at Ohio Linux Fest, which actually was a great time. I wish I could have brought it up. Uh, one a handful of you came out and said hi that you know knew me from the channel. Awesome meeting you. Uh, it was really cool talking and interacting with people. The Ohio Linux Fest was a little smaller than I remember, but it was still great people there. And that's the part that matters. But then these people happen to be staying on the same floor as me. Does anyone recognize these people? <laughs> um, so it... And if, if you need a hint, I mean, I you can't help but as soon as you see him, you're like, were you even supposed to be in this elevator today? Like, you, I'm at a Linux Fest. There's also a uh, another festival going on. I think it was called Galaxy Con or something. Um, but those guys uh, were there. And I was like, I got ended up in an elevator with them. And it was just funny uh, cracking up. And I said, well, can I take your picture? Because I, I didn't want to be rude. I don't know the rules. So I was like, can I take your picture? And they're like, can you? And, was, you know, and we started laughing and joking around and having some fun. So uh, it was actually kind of interesting. So if, if you're not familiar with who these people are, it's uh, Dante and Randall from Clerks. So it's <laughs> that a donut. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was, that was my um, celebrity run-in I had. So... I see this, the the call the the watchers are slowly kind of wandering off. <laughs> uh, I am way off topic. Forty five drives. Woo! They do have a tornado. Uh, a tornado now. It looks like they finally did SAS features too. Uh, replace the MD one twenty forty five drive system. Yeah, they have one. Um, when they get it done. There's a good chance I'll get I'll I'll have one um at the minimum so I can be playing with it uh and doing some videos on it. So uh, that's part of the reason I, I didn't look to see when it was. I was pretty sure it's uh on there, um on their site now though. I I mean they mean it's been in development for a little while. There's my son joining us again. Here's the uh I didn't ask really why, and I don't really care. We put the drives in, in an unusual pattern because it doesn't matter. But that's where this is what it looks like here. And then when you go to the disc, it displays them the same way here. So I think it's kind of neat how it uh, all matches up. It's like there's that's what it looks like physically. And then that's what it looks like in there where you can see the different uh, drives. It's pretty slick. I, I'm really happy with the 45 drives. Of code. We've been um, installing a lot more of them and people just, they just work like they're, they're pretty trouble free and their support is really good. You're keeping me entertained. As long as I'm entertaining at least one person, even if there's 15 people that left and I don't blame them for leaving because <laughs> I don't feel bad. I'm like, Hey, you know, if I'm not, if I'm not covering the things you want to hear about, So what was the mislabeled cable when you try to hop on this box in your last vlog? Hmm. I honestly can't remember. <laughs> mislabeled cable. I don't remember what it is. I don't remember what it is. Your drive distribution uh, spreads more evenly in the chassis and the rack. More important in small deployments and large. Yeah. I think that's what their idea was. They uh, And my employees did this, not me. I couldn't access it. Oh, yeah. I plugged the cable in the wrong spot and I couldn't figure out where. Yeah, I just I that's why I couldn't. I wanted to pull the 45 drives up last last vlog Thursday, but I couldn't 
because it wasn't plugged into the right spot. Now that it's plugged into the right spot, here we are. Access it. So those are one of the little things of I, I didn't hook it up right, but it's working now. And that's the part that matters. I actually have two of them at my office. There's uh did I take a picture of them? Probably not. There we have uh, two of these units um for a project. Yep, no pictures of them. Not yet. Uh Oh, there's so many, so many photos and things like that. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to make sure I show you only the tech related photos. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, that's just one of them. That's, oh, well, I'll see if I can find more. I used to support a warehouse several states away. Layer one was more often not the culprit when you got to go check yourself. Yeah. Uh, what size drives are any? That's a good question. I think we can answer that. So these are, um, hold on, where does it show the drive itself? There we go. 14 terabyte drives, Seagates. Seagate 14 terabytes. And there's 16 of them in each unit. Um, and the rest is for maybe expansion later. So this gives us an effective, usable amount of storage of, um, it says it right here, 160 terabytes. 116 uh, raw, yeah, 160 terabytes available. So it's it's going to be for a whole bunch of backups. It's just a landing spot for a project. Total storage raw is going to be the uh, 232 terabytes. I used to have Synology Photos. You can tell them both right now space on our phones while on vacation. Yeah, it's Synology Photos is nice for that. So I have all my, you know, vacation photos and uh, things like that. I really like Synology Photos. Like it's just, a, it works well. Um, let me, I shall log into it. For those of you, I did a video on Synology Photos. It wasn't a very popular video. I think like people asked me about it. I did a video and no one really watched it. <laughs> I don't remember how many views it got. Not a lot. Um, I got to log in as my other user. Would you believe I actually practice principles and of least privilege and have separate users that I don't just log in as admin all the time on my Synology system? Um, let's see. Oh, I have, um, I have some deer photos. I can, where's that at? Share this tab instead. So it looks a whole lot like I was up north uh, for Thanksgiving and Synology Photos looks shockingly like the uh, um, Google Photos. It doesn't really have any of the editing features, uh, info features, and it pulls some geolocation information, gives you a general area about where it's at. Um, Northern Michigan's a broad area where this was where I took a picture of a deer standing outside. Um, but Synology Photos works well. Like I, I do like it. I'm seeing if I can show you all the photos. Oh, ha, someone will get a kick out of this. Um, so I'm driving and I see this. I, I happen to be behind this guy on my way up north. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's a truckload of ubiquity stuff. So uh yeah. Look, there's a bunch of uh, stuff in there. This guy's riding on the freeway. So he's got a bunch of uh, ISO beams and everything else in there. Rocket dish. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. Should we see you enjoying Houston? Uh, you see, you enjoy. Oh, Houston, our team has put a lot into the user experience. Look forward to advancing function. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize you were one of the people on the team, but yeah, the Houston OS is awesome. Uh, definitely, I'm really liking it. The from when I used it a year ago to today, uh, feels a lot more polished, and I that is that's a big improvement. So, um, if you're wondering what my video is going to be like that I do tomorrow, that I record tomorrow, it's going to be positive. <laughs>
16 terabyte drives, 14 is drive makers, so 16 drive maker terabytes. Yeah. What's the benefit of is Synology Photos or a drive currently use drive? I also back up my photos to my iPhone. Um, well, the couple of reasons I do it, and then Cody may want to chime in there as well. The advantage is going to be um, food. Oh, I guess I do have to feed my son. I thought he was already fed. Must be pizza time. <laughs> um, one of the things about the, the what do you call it? Um, the the Synology photo system is you're in control of all the photos and it's you not just letting or surrendering everything to the Google cloud. Uh, so that's one of the nice things about the Synology photos. Like you're in control of it. You're, you're also responsible for backing all of them up at that point as well. But I, I actually really like it. Um, it's also, you know, if you're a little bit more privacy oriented or you're worried about things like, hey, maybe I don't want those in the cloud, um, it's a nice thing to do. And this particular Synology system uh, that is set up in here, because I have more than one Synology, this one's locked down. It has access to the internet to go out, but no ports are opened or anything. I keep it locked down. I keep my photos on there. I'm just trying to mitigate or minimize any potential risk of doing it. I mean, if someone got a hold of my dad's dog and his cone of shame, I mean, I've already put it on the internet, so I guess it doesn't matter. But I'm just saying, I, this is a, this photo is a keeper because <laughs> the, the uh, you know, the dog staring at me with his cone of his cone on was just, I don't know, amusing to me. Uh, but any of my personal photos uh, that I want to keep are there. The techie photos that like, mostly end up on whatever social media platform I'm posting them to, uh, I'm much less worried about. Hey, the Cisco video is coming. I started mine and it's man. Not sure uh, how I feel about it. I feel man about it too. Me and you should probably, uh, I'll message you on, on Twitter. Maybe we should have a conversation about it. And maybe we'll do like a uh, video together, like a collaboration on it. Cause I feel the same way. Uh, I'm not impressed with those Cisco's. I don't, did you get the controller set up yet and test it from that aspect? I'm, I had a, I got to see if they have firmware updates to solve some of the bugs I was having in it. But maybe we should, before we do the videos and, uh, you know, in full display of the public, me and Cody, are, you know, if he's interested, I'm willing to collaborate with you on it so we can swap some notes and make sure we understand the product because I don't understand why the product's not that great. <laughs> so, but nonetheless, um, yes. Let's uh mess you you can DM me on Twitter or however and we can chat about that. <laughs> my truck is same color. <laughs> yeah, I think I do have to feed my son. Uh Marcus will be brought enough food for the whole stream. Yeah. Well, it's coming up on two hours, so I guess it's time to go. Well, you know, I I I'll bring this up if my son's even paying attention to my live stream anymore. I got you that pizza with the double pepperoni on it. Go ahead and throw that in the oven because I'll eat some of that too. I don't feel like leaving again because uh, I already got a beer. <laughs> yeah, send me a DM tomorrow and we can talk about it. Um, like I said, I am I had a lot of problems with, uh, it's really weird because my wife's Lenovo or yeah, her Lenovo won't connect to the repeaters. Uh, do you have the repeaters? Uh, I don't know if you do or not, Cody, um, but I've tried them and I can't get the stupid things to work with my wife's laptop. And I don't know why um, it, it was like weird quirkiness I had with it that I wasn't really, I don't know. It's kind of like, it, why isn't it better? And I talked to the Cisco people and they're like, oh, make sure you update the firmware and all the usual things. I'm like, I did. And even one of them, I think, said like, oh, that's a problem we had before. We thought that was fixed. I'm like, ah, why? And all of these streams are great catch to meet, but when you need to go, uh, don't let us keep you. They only sent me one AP and a switch. Well, I tell you what, this might be fun. Um... I actually have a couple of the repeaters, so maybe I will send one to you so you can test that aspect of it as well, because that's the part I had problems with. I actually used it for my network and it worked fine. Like I just to connect all my devices, the actual Cisco device worked. It was the extenders that I kept having problems with. 
Um, and I kind of forgot about them for a little while and just kind of set them aside. But no, let's uh, let's talk about doing a video together on it. And, you know, we can probably even uh, uh, do something kind of back and forth about what we like and don't like and make a list. Um, and we can do our individual uh, videos on them as well. I've not really used any of the ruckus equipment. People ask me about it, but two problems I have with ruckus. One, it's expensive. Um, two, it's confusing. Like their product site is not, maybe it's me. Last time I looked, maybe they got their website up to date. It was a little confusing trying to pick through their products on there. So I don't really have any deep opinions on them as I haven't really used them. Um, but they do appear to be kind of pricey. That'd be cool to see if we can have some of the same experiences. I also have, and maybe I'll give one away. Cisco gave me a few switches. So uh, I want to do some more giveaways on my channel with some of the hardware I have because we're starting to get too much of it again. And I would like someone else who could use it because I only need, um, when it comes to equipment, I like to keep some things available so we have them if I want to do testing. But I don't necessarily need two or three of those things. So I may want to do some giveaways to hardware or, you know, maybe Cody would like to uh, review some of it. And if I can send some more hardware over to you, um, why not? I wish I had the budget for Ruckus. Yeah, so you've pretty much said the same thing. Bad customers say, no Unify, what would you recommend instead of a... Uh, it said, you know, I've actually uh, had reasonable experiences with the Aruba stuff. We've we've actually worked in some larger Aruba environments and it seemed to work fine. Uh, so I didn't have any complaints. I think they're really basic uh, with their web interface, but it functioned. Uh, so at least I've had some experience that said, hey, this wasn't hot garbage. Uh, so probably Aruba would be the next in line. Now, maybe Ruckus is really good, but their pricing is not good. So that that's kind of the first problem with Ruckus is when I look up their price, I'm like, why is it so much more expensive? I mean, I think it's even more expensive than some of the Cisco stuff. If the Cisco pans out and it gets better, I would like to start deploying. Uh, not only I like deploying it, but like I would like to have the Cisco on a recommendation list. I'd like to think Cisco could be a reasonable small business deployment, but so far they haven't really wowed me. Now, I like the switch. I'm only talking about their wireless. The switch I've used, I like it because it's the first Cisco switch that has a nice web UI and a VLAN wizard. Um, that made me think a little bit differently, going, hey, this is actually a decent, like, I could give this to someone who's not a Cisco engineer and they could set it up. That's that's a bar. So it's not a matter of whether or not the switch functions. How hard are those functions to do matters. And if you only make a switch that's harder where you go, oh, of course, you need a you know, Cisco certified guys to be able to do this. I'm like, well, I want to be able to hand it to someone and say, hey, you can go through these settings and not have to run around on the command line. So. Linus probably has some sponsored videos by Ruckus. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if I had to guess, are they sponsored by Ruckus? Just curious. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I hear TP-Link came out with a new AP that's not gigantic. Yeah, I'm un unclear on the security of them. So that's... Yeah. I don't really trust TP-Link to do a good job of security. I don't think they have a good listing for how long a life cycle is for their product either. Without a good listing of how long the life cycle is, you're it's a hard sell because I, I can't just set it and forget it. I can't just deploy and run. I actually have a phone that customers contact us. As a matter of fact, we want them to contact us again. So I'm very picky to some extent, probably to a lot of extent, of the products we choose because I don't want to um, have a bad relationship going forward with the clients. So, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, and I, I've said this a couple of times, but call me out if I'm wrong. It took them a long time to patch Log4j. Uh, that, you know, we haven't seen a whole lot of security issues with the software uh, that Unify is on there. But you look at Unify, um, for better or worse, they're, you know, they may have their flaws on some things. But when it comes to security, they've really ramped up. They got a bug bounty program. 
I actually have chatted. You you can follow on Twitter, uh, one of their security people. Um, and I've interacted with them a few times. Like they seem to be really on the ball with it. So uh, I, you know, I, I may not know when they're going to release Unify OS 3.0. But I feel like they'll patch a security bug that comes in. Matter of fact, they were extremely on top of the uh, log for J stuff is, you know, a, a pretty big issue. And they were right away on top of it with releases to patch that. So. Oh, they, now, now you do have some uh, cheap trick ringing in my head. I want you to want me. That's that's how, that's how I read that. <laughs> I prefer to picture with the clerks, guys. This should be great if it weren't for all the customers. Yes, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. What? Oh, here's the problem. People go, I want my product to cost this much. I want my support to be this good. And I'm going right off the screen with the support. I'm raising my hand completely above my head. Um, the problem is support is expensive. And that's why they don't have it. They they have made the product less by skipping the support. Because trying to support users is hard. I know from not just doing it. I know from running a YouTube channel that we offer consulting. And because we have a phone number people can call uh we get people who call and it can be interesting we actually i i'll i'll tip of the hat to this person though tip of the hat they um they had a new one they threw one of my uh the sales people for not a loop but a pause to think about the logic they used and I, i'm not one to complain i'm happy that people book us for consulting and things like that i'm not you know but this particular person called us and was angry that we would not give them free consulting and their logic was usually i've had people say well i watch your videos you should help me and i'm like i don't have time to like log in sort out your entire network mess or you know a true nas storage problem you created for free we have a fee we're open about how those fees are charged you can go to the website we have our prices posted we don't there's no shenanigans we're very upfront about all of these uh things but this person actually said something I hadn't heard before. <laughs> and they said, you give away consulting for free online. You should give it away free to me. And I'm just like, that's a new twist. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm just like, I don't know. Dealing with the general public is where Unify and um, yeah, the dealing with the general public has a cost and i wish there was a way to do this but i don't know an easy way do do we make people take a test before they get to the support line like do you, do you run them through a basic version of network plus like here fill this out and you get to have a phone number if you fill out and you pass this exam like show me your your at least certified in something before you get to talk to support um it's just one of those things it, it's just is what it is. Uh, I'm not trying to be mad about saying it's a big problem. They have no support, but that's what happens when you want to make a product for less money uh, support. Matter of fact, if you look at where my money goes each month, um, when we do our monthly P and L's and profit and loss sheets, labor hiring a bunch of people um, has a expense to it. People want that good customer service. I have to pay all those people. Uh, those people are my biggest expense. That is uh, all the money going out. So Yeah, it's always, um, yeah, if they, if there should be a test to get past the lowest tiers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't know. It's, it's a challenge running a support thing. Um, I, I participate in other forums besides my own forums, and I'm always puzzled because the number of people that post unrelated problems, if you go into the, and it's not horrible, but sometimes it's, it's head scratching. So XCPNG has forums for supporting the hypervisor XCPNG and for supporting Zen Orchestra. But the questions in there, when people are trying to tag other people like the developers, hey, I'm having this problem with Windows. I'm having a trouble with a hard drive in one of the virtual machines. 
one person even had a whole post about how their hard drive kept making clicking noises about it going bad. And like, no, like people just wander right off the product topic and into help me with just generalized problem I'm having. And uh, yeah, it's just, it can be tricky. I went to the Cisco business and they have different tech teams and different levels of network engineers. Um, and all, they're all, oh, you, you are one. Yeah. Um, reaching back, but, did, uh, but someone did that years ago. If you were certified in a product, you got a different number. I think it was Radware. It's not a bad idea, like to have a certified partners thing. Like you went through their certif their product certification and that gives you access. Like you, you get a code, like you can go in and get a callback. Uh, I actually love callbacks. I think that's one of the easier ones because why wait on hold? They know when they're done with their ticket. Uh, I've actually like Google Fi does this. You can, you can schedule callbacks. I'm always, I'm always like, cool, schedule callback. That works. Uh, that works great. The number of people asking general OS questions on the TrueNAS forum is also ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's by far not exclusive to the XCPNG forum. It's a problem. People go, oh, look, people reply to comments or reply to posts on here. Let me post about my thing. You know, can, can you uh, help me with this Windows problem I'm having? Sir, this is a TrueNAS forum. <laughs> Pricing tiers based on how stupid the questions are. Well, I will say this in, in a slightly self-serving way. I'm okay that Unify doesn't offer support because people hire us for Unify support all the time. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think Cody will chime in here going, hey, people hire me for Unify support all the time. It's fine that Unify doesn't offer it. It's kind of, matter of fact, because we don't sell the product, it's easier to sell people on the support because you're not complaining about a product I sold you. You're complaining about a product that someone else sold you. And now you have to pay me to support it. That's fine. It's, it's, it's the way of things. I worked the main chat uh, on MSN during launch. The number of people that came there for support for windows. Oh, I imagine. Yeah, Comcast, I, I know people that are like Comcast or cable installers in general, but um, they always have the worst stories working with the general public. They always have a lot of stories working with the general public. So <laughs> I hope Uni I hope Unify never has support. It's the biggest part of my business. <laughs> See, I knew Cody would have the same opinion as I do. I know it's self-serving. Um, it, it's... It makes up a percent. I think it's like one fifth of our our uh, consulting uh, calls that we do, like our bookings. When I I did that video the other day talking about it, and I think it's it's like twenty percent. It's a pretty big number for us. It's not um, it's not the biggest part, but it's it's a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot. <laughs> Back in the early 90s, I managed uh, AST Advantage support lines. We got asking how to format text and word and crap like that. Yeah. Um, I told them you can't call GE and get instructions on how to bake. Well, that's probably a good point there. Yeah. So it doesn't mean you're not going to help me with my clicking hard drives. They actually replied. I thought it was nice of the people in the forums to reply and kind of, you know, let them know there's not a lot you can do. The... When, when the hard drive starts singing the song of its people, it is, it is, it is going to be laid to rest soon. <laughs> I get a lot of crazy questions in my forums too. They're not, I mean, not crazy. Um, uh, let's see if there's any weird ones in there. Uh, throw it in here. I have my forum, so um, uh, clean install seven three six restore from backup. So, folks, I still need to make the following changes: fourteen switches. Do I still need to make the following changes? I don't know. Oh, probably. 
I would, so yeah. Yes, actually, this this is a good question. This person asked right here, so I'll reply to them. This is what I do a lot. I reply to my forum people all the time. Yes, those settings are not are not part of the backup. And this is the uh, tuning, uh, how to tune controller for that. So, yes, you still got to make those changes. I see. I like the forums for things like that. And uh, my forums, you know, I've been running them for a while. So um, hold on, make sure I don't have anyone's email just exposed in there. There we go. But this will give you an idea. I can pull it back up now. Um, I've been running these for a while, but I mean, I'm getting... I mean, it's about 8,000. I mean, granted, 3,000 are just crawlers indexing it, but I'm fine with that too. But yeah, logged in users each day. <laughs> really weird for only 428 that day. But, you know, anonymous users hitting the site. What was that? Three to 4,000 a day. It's a pretty good consolidated page views up every day for it. And when I release videos, there's always a lot more signups on those days and topic posts and things like that. But I, I think forums is one of my preferred ways to, um, you know, help engage with people and uh, talk to them. I don't mind doing, my forums are kind of like anything. If I've talked about it on a channel, my forums are probably a place to post about it. That's one of the reasons I say that at the end of my videos. It's just a way for people to interact with me. I don't market anything on there. I don't use your email address for anything. People always sign up with, um, I always love the ones that when people have their own domain, it'll say, you know, like Lawrence forums at their domain.com, which is fine. It's probably a good tracking method to, to keep me honest, to make sure uh, no one ever tries to use that. Uh, but also it, someone can always guess it because you're just calling it Lawrence forums and all kinds of random things like that. I like the people who have gibberish, the people that make up an email address at their domain. Those are the ones I think I have the most respect for when you just make up gibberish at your domain.com um so that is a true tracking because it's pretty unguessable uh for things i don't really know many other people in canada who support ubiquity hmm uh started to uh, started two hours ago sounds like i showed up and just in time for the end yes uh, is the forums based on something self-hostable or self-made? Yes, it runs on a tool called uh, Discourse. It's open source. It's I manage it and host it. I was running my own company. I had a client who said they were going to go new PCs place because they were cheaper. I got called because they were slow per and per hour was cheaper. Huh. Mm -hmm. Whatever you can, always the goal is to try to charge for an outcome. Um, that's always what I'm trying to do is do a four outcome charge. That's a business recommendation I have for people. Now, my consulting is hourly because people are throwing problems at me. And I have one tomorrow that's just basically this don't work. It was working. It broke. And they're like, how much to fix it? I'm like, you don't even know what broke. Uh, you broke a database connection somewhere. So that's hourly because I don't know. I'm going to poke at it until we figure it out. Um, but when you can, uh, charging for outcome is always the best way to do it because it's, you know, the client knows it's going to cost X to accomplish something. No one's going to be timing you on how long it takes. Uh, you, you're being charged. You're sending a bill or a proposal to do it for a exacting outcome. But yeah, uh, but sometimes you have to charge hourly. Troubleshooting is just an hourly thing. It's like, and then people just debate about what you're worth per hour. You know how that goes through? You walk in the door and suddenly they have you working on half the network. Oh, no. Scope creep is a real problem. So you have to define what is in scope. You have to be very clear about that. <laughs> yes. Price per outcome requires very careful, clear wording. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So Tom manages a lot of stuff for his home and his family. If something happens to Tom, it's hassle for a month. Do they have a contingency? How does that 
uh, how does he even plan out for loved ones? Um, no one, uh, the contingency plan for any stuff here is like, if, you know, someone needs access to camera systems and I'm not around, my staff has access to these things. So it actually falls inward to my staff to manage things. Um, just like my business, my business doesn't require me to run. Payroll does not require me to sign a single thing. I've automated all those processes and put more people in charge of them. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't even do a lot of them anymore. I, uh, I have a business manager and an external accounting firm that does everything from pays to taxes, make sure employees are paid and everything else. So there's a lot of automation and externalness that I've built in to mitigate the need for me. So I, I, I'm not a micromanager. And one of my goals in how I work my business is to try to work myself out of being important. Uh, too many people think the goal of being the business owner is to be the most important person all the time or the head of tech. Now, sometimes you can't avoid it and you just don't have anyone you can hand all that information over to. Um, that has actually happened uh, quite a few times where you know someone's loved one died and they were a tech enthusiast. And I've actually had to come in and help. I had to help someone uh, whose partner passed away and I had to help them sort everything out um, because they just weren't tech savvy. Their partner was, their partner died. And now they didn't know how anything worked in the house. Uh, so I've had to do that. We've had it more than once because we deal with so many businesses uh, where the tech guy, one of them was killed in a motorcycle accident. And the owners never thought to have a contingency plan because the death was sudden and surprising and the sudden and surprising death meant nobody knew the passwords to anything or where even any of the backups were. So when this person um, literally, you know, and, and tragically died, uh, no one really knew what to do. And everything became this big mess to try to sort out because it was like, well, one person uh, was just trusted. They were a good IT person, but they weren't good at documenting things. Um, so yeah, that became an interesting client, uh, to take on. I started charging 150 for our men. If I travel 30 minutes, cause I'm too busy with other work, engineering hospitals, uh, and don't need the headache. Yeah. It all comes down to where you are, what the market rates you can charge are. Um, that's going to vary from area to area. You know, if you're, in California, your cost of living is substantially more than it is here, for example, in Michigan. So um, there's your rates have are going to be influenced by some of those factors. Michigan's actually, um, well, I mean, compared to New York, compared to California, compared to a few other cities, you know, Michigan's a pretty inexpensive place to live even living where i live in michigan where is the suburbs if you go to rural michigan further out like where uh my family lives um it's it's even less expensive because it's just there's nothing else out there so there's n the housing pricing and the land prices are a lot cheaper um yeah, that's one of those you know considerations that drive a lot of it what it costs you to have a building what it costs you to even have a house, go to the store, all those things. There's a, there's so many price factors in there that drive all of this. It's not, um, it's not a light switch. It's not like, Hey, the market rate is this. No, the market rate is the market of that market, that small microcosm ecosystem in this particular area. Uh, in yeah, that, that'll drive your rates quite a bit, which is, our market rates are driven by our global reach now with um, there. We actually are priced too high for some of our local people. They find our rates kind of expensive. That's fine. The people in California think our rates are cheap. So I think it's competitive. Police department that was all 10 base 2 coax. They had been fiddling around with the T's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had no idea how to do it properly. The little BNC connectors, man, those things. The uh, BNC. Um, actually, let me find the network ones. I'm 
Trying to find the right one. Ooh, there's the old. I'm trying to find the old. Uh... There we go. Now I can share a screen. Those connectors. Who who dealt with these for a while? The BNC RJ45 connectors that were on these. These were so popular. I love these ones. These were the cool ones. The ones that you could do all of them. You had you had all three connectors on one. BNC RJ45 AUI. That's a throwback. The dual ones. When I first got into networking, this is what I used to set up was these devices. Never forget to terminate. Hmm. Back in the day. Yeah, lots of us all started on these BNCs, or at least if you're my age, you did. I mean, there's people obviously that worked on stuff older than this, but classic. If I find more of them, there you go. Um, can I open up? There's the bus topology. So you used to have these terminators on, on the end of it to make it all work. <laughs> the van thick net vampire taps. Yeah. Oh yeah, Lantastic. Yep. That's been wow. I like some of the old um vintage stuff and everything else too. That's uh where is it? Hold on, I'll pull it up here. There we go. I like this. This is uh I'll drop a link here for you guys. Tom's guilty pleasures of going all this stuff here. I always flip through the vintage computing stuff on Reddit. I always, I don't know. It's always cool to me. Look at that. 3D effects, man. Who had one of those? Who had a set of these speakers? You know, maybe I should just do a vintage hardware live stream. Like, who had one of these? It's always fun and engaging, right? You guys have till my beer's over in case you're wondering how much longer I'm going to go. There's there's a little, there's some beer left in here. But, uh, no, the vintage computer stuff, man, there's all kinds of neat things in here. Meetups and... It's funny because, like, now this is vintage, the beige box stuff. And beige box is like, you know, I mean, it's old, but it's my lifetime here. <laughs> I like all this old stuff. It's just kind of novel. I wonder if I got a picture. I had that set of speakers. This is the computer I started on right here. TRS-80. This one with the little tiny ass keyboard. Oh, man. I, I spent a lot of time typing on that. Um, IBM with the five and a half. Our first personal computer. Yeah. All these old cards. I don't know. I, I like all of this. It's just novel. I worked at a place used to fix some of these. The old um, giant IBM 286s. I like that they got the lamp on there. That's cool. What is that? SD USB ID? Huh. That's actually interesting. An ISA USB adapter. S 
so much vintage hardware. Oh, the old Radio Shack batteries. I, th that's one thing is I said earlier, and I don't watch a lot of videos to learn things. I do watch vintage computer videos. Those are great. Those are just pure entertainment for me. I think I have a couple of these floating around in my office somewhere. So much vintage cassette games. Oh yeah, these were I had I had a cassette one. I had a TRS-80 cassette. <sighs> trumpet windsock. Yep. I know what trumpet windsock is. Started programming on a C64. Yes. Atari 1024 ST. Awesome. Yeah, I like some of the vintage stuff is just cool. I mean, it's just neat talking about it. I don't really want to start collecting it because I'll become obsessive and have a lot of it. Uh, so I, I'm happy to look at it and watch other people collect it. I, you know, if you watch my studio tour, you realize my studio is pretty minimal. I'll, I'm a minimalist. Like I try to do everything in a very minimal way because I don't want to uh, have too many things. I'm distracted when there's too many things. See, if I watch a video on things, I can just turn a video off and or I can browse Reddit and I'm happy to see all the things. Who had a libretto? Those were awesome. I remember the first time I got to play, I could never afford one when I was really young when they were they were thing. I couldn't justify the price on them, but those were really neat. Later I could afford them when I got a good job in tech. Uh, was the Commodore 64 involved in a sixth part uh, South Park episode? I don't know. Oh, wind modems, man. Wind modems were so difficult. I used to help an ISP do tech support years ago, and wind modems were always the pain in the butt once to set up. Game Awards after so I see my son's in here. And uh, Cody wants to know, what are you looking forward to on the Game Awards? Just, just warm your dad's heart and say you're looking forward to watching him with your dad. <laughs> I don't really play many games, so I don't even know what's going to be on them. <laughs> Me and my son just finished Breaking Bad, though, so there's that. Actually, we, um, what is it? Do I have a picture of it? We are live. We got a new couch. So this is what me and my son will be doing is sitting on our new couch and watching uh, Breaking Bad. This is, uh, I'll throw, I'll throw this up here because I'm finishing my beer and I'm going to go upstairs. Plus I have to pee. So, um, there's the couch that we have now that we sit on and watch is I bought a new TV and a new couch. I, people ask me about the tech in my house. It's really not. I mean, I, I just bought an OLED TV, so I'm pretty excited about it. Um, cause it's cool, but it's off topic on my channel. So maybe I'll talk about it in a live stream if people are interested. Um, but we just bought a new couch. That's my, that's my internal exciting things that I do, but. Um, <laughs> that's where we'll probably sit out in the living room watching uh, whatever it is my son wants to watch. <laughs> uh, let's see. Plenty of space. Yeah, we want to have some movie nights. I have a 77-inch OLED TV I bought, and we have a couch big enough for like six or eight people. So depending on how much they like each other. <laughs> it's an Ikea couch, too. Yeah, this... Uh, this is, um, it, it's really comfortable. It's all from Ikea. I don't think I have a picture. I don't have a picture of the new TV. I haven't, I actually haven't taken one yet. My mm -hmm. wife's got all the Christmas stuff everywhere. So there's that. But yeah, this couch is actually pretty huge. But that's where we usually sit in there. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, I, I am downstairs. Um, that's where my office is, where my studio is. I think I have. Uh, let me see. I have a pair of picture of my old TV. So let me pull that up. Somewhere. I'll find it. My house... Um, Actually, if anyone's curious, 
I think I have this. Uh, now, this TV, I'll share this tab instead. Uh, this TV was the old TV. Um, that wall is really big. That's a 60 inch TV. So I went from a 60 inch TV to a 70, uh, 77. So it's even bigger. So I got to do an update. And this wasn't the finished video uh, or finished uh, product. Uh, we actually had done a few other things on there. So. Movie night at Tom's house. Tom has a dungeon. Um, yeah. If you're curious though, the, I, this is a, this is what here, uh, this was my house before it was built. Um, I have all the photos of it from start to finish, like, you know, assembling everything, um, putting the bricks up, building the shower, like this, uh, this house is done in 20, we moved in in 2020. It was all built in, uh, 2019. I have pictures of my attic in here. This is the basement, um, when we first got it. So that's what the basement did look like. Here's a wide angle. My studio is over here. There's the furnace. My rack actually sits over here. Um, if you're wondering what my sunroom looks like, that's where my sun sits. But yeah, and it's changed again since we did this because we've added more things. That's my old couch. I didn't, I got to put a picture of the new couch in there. But then we uh, built the studio, the basement. There's, you know, all the wood when we framed it in. We stained all the cement black. Every step of the way, even I even did all the electrical work. I actually built all this. Like we swing in a hammer. I put this all together. I didn't build the house originally, um, but we built a, uh, we built all the extras, like all the add-ons. But this is my studio just before it was finished. You can see the ceilings in. That's the desk I sit at. And for those of you watch the studio tour, uh, there's the rack in the beginnings of it getting slowly installed. The studio getting built. This is the other side from my studio. This is a uh, another living area where we built. So this is another big room. It's uh, thirty two by or thirty six by twenty eight. And then this is my this is the desk I'm sitting at right now. And then we did a bunch of work in my backyard too. This is the back of my house. My wife did not let me have a uh, uh, a Pittsburgh potty. Sorry about it. She wouldn't let it happen. Yeah, she wouldn't let it happen. So look at that TV next to those little itty bitty clip speakers. Those are actually kind of big clip speakers. It's just a big room. <laughs> but I, I get what you're saying on that. But yeah, I built a gazebo. I built this. Uh, we, we, we got a barn. And my wife bought a hot tub. So I took a picture sitting in the hot tub. That's a. <laughs> oh, it's actually a Dutch oven, not a not an oven. There is a sign on my door that says that. Looks bigger on the inside. My uh the upstairs of my house is only 1,800 square feet. I we built a house to be the way I wanted it, and the way I didn't want it was big. Um I'm on the side of my life when I only have, I have several kids, but they've all moved out except for my son. So there's not too many people living here. It's just me and my wife and my son. So I don't have, uh, my other house was actually, my previous house was slightly uh, bigger than this one. That's what my backyard looks like though. But yeah, my other house was, um, <laughs> what's with the Dutch leave this out of this? Uh, Put a lot of effort to finish. Thank you very much. And yeah, it was, all, uh, there's a lot that went into finishing all of it. That is for sure. It's it's not the building. It's all those details that take so much time um, to get all those little, all these little things done. You know, even, you know, painting because they didn't send me the right one. So I had to paint the vents for the HVAC. So they all blended into the ceiling because you see them here. They were white when they sent them to me. So now that they're, you know, they're black. They match the ceiling. So everything blends in. And I did all this electrical work is something I did. Um, I put all this in wired, all of it. It was, it was so much, uh, memories of doing all that. Like I would work, create my videos and do all this and then go swing hammers. 
Uh, there, there's a view of my living room. My living room, this is how it looks out in my backyard. Actually, this is a more recent picture because these are the new chairs we bought. I put a bunch of LED lights in my kitchen too. Because, you know, you got to go RGB in the kitchen. There's us installing it, fishing all the wires and everything else. We had to move this whole junction box down. We actually repatched the wall. Um, but yeah, we pulled everything uh, to get this all through there. It was, like you said, it's a lot. It's it's this constant lot of getting it all done. Fun stuff. In the end, I have my own parody. Sure, yeah. It's it. I'm comfortable here. That's my biggest thing. Is I'm you know it's uh it it's really close to everything and uh, I don't really have any home automation. A lot of people ask this, but I don't go crazy with the home automation because uh, it doesn't interest me that much. Like I want lights to turn on and off, and that's it. So I have um, my home assistant. So this is as close as I get to home automation. So I have some things tied to this, uh, but not a lot. I'm I'm pretty minimalist on on a lot of the home automation. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and I'm answering that question right here. I have these are the only things that are smart in my house. You know, I have a Synology tied to my home assistant, so I can take a quick look and see, you know, the last videos that were played. So if there's an alert, um, these will pop up to let me know someone's. Someone's been there. Yeah, just no home animation, just the lights. That's, I'm the same way. I don't really, I don't want to put too much. Uh, I, mean, I mean, like my studio stuff, for example, um, I can turn this on and off. Like that's the light that's just shining in my face right now. Uh, the, the fill light for this, this camera right here. Um, but yeah. The rest of the studio, I can turn this on. I can turn my studio computer on, but that's really it. Uh, yeah, I, I like the Amcrest cameras a lot. How about it being a lot of work? I believe you, we just moved into a, a ready move in place a couple months ago, and we have not had a chance to uh, sit down and enjoy it. Yeah, you're just nonstop. There's like just so many things that need to be done all the time until you get them done. And our yard was like that too, because the, I don't have a ton of pictures of it, I think, but the somewhere. Yeah. If you look through, like, these are my yard photos. We dug up the whole backyard to re-level it because that was not something they did. So my yard looked like this. It was just messy. Um, so we laid down, I mean, an incredible amount of mulch, brought a bunch of dirt in re-leveled everything it was just oh there's i i forget how many truckloads of mulch that is um oh, oh share this tab there we go yeah it's just wild how much uh had to be done to make this yard like this like this is my yard when you know before we started was this mess right here and it's like piece by piece redoing everything leveling everything then Laying this down so all the grass starts growing. It's like slowly coming in. And then comes all the cement work, building the cement uh, so we can build the patios, which, of course, tears the yard up some more. But then we built the gazebo and everything else. Yeah, it's just, it's a lot. So now it looks like, well, the leaves are gone, but that's what it looked like in the fall. <laughs> Uh, can you turn the computer stereo off from there too? No, um, it's a Windows server and it has Wake on LAN, so I'm able to do the Wake on LAN right here to turn it on, but it won't turn it off. There's a way you can load something to turn it off, but if it's on, I have access to the screen with my mouse, so I usually just click shut down. So I've never bothered loading the tool, so you can do the turn off. Yeah, all I used was the um, wake on land command. 
So I went into BIOS, turned on Wake on LAN, and set it up that way. Probably, but like I said, if you watch my studio tour, I'm going to gesture this way. That way is a giant TV. Well, not giant. It's a TV. Um, TV giant relative. It's like a 50-inch. There's a 50-inch TV over here that is the screen for the computer. And so I use Barrier, which allows me to use the one mouse and keyboard to control multiple computers. And so I use Barrier, and I click on Start, Shut Down, and I shut it off. So I don't worry about turning it off from Home Assistant. I just turn it on from Home Assistant. Yeah, I know you can use the MQTT. I just never set it up. I'm like, that looks interesting. And I got bored and never did it. Bored, bored, no, preoccupied with like 10 other things. <laughs> yeah, it's the preoccupation with things that um, can be hard. Once I get preoccupied with something else, I'm like, oh, that's not going to happen. Oh, let's see. Well, the beer is empty. I kind of have to pee, so I think I will wander off. This is probably the longest I've done a live stream in a long time. This was actually kind of fun. So, ah, oh, yeah, barrier's cool. Ooh, VR Horizon game. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for the good evening. Um, is your rack not too noisy or is there some barrier between the, at your desk? Watch my studio. I just did a studio one, and yes, uh, there's a there's a lot of sound and deadening that went in here, and I covered that in my studio video. But the short answer, yes, it's all sound deadened. I'm in a sound deadened room, so my computer's not even in this room. Uh, the rack and everything is in the other room. So none of it, none of it bleeds in here, but... Thank you for uh, over a hundred of you that stayed with me for two hours and 46 minutes of this live stream. That is awesome. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. I do have fun interacting. Uh, maybe if I have some time this Saturday, it's winter. So I don't go outside as much. So I don't mind jumping in on a Saturday uh, and doing our live stream. So thank you everyone who hung in here. Thank you to my friends in Europe who it's 2 a.m. Uh, over here in Switzerland. So <laughs> Uh, great. I love doing the whole Q&A thing. So nonetheless, uh, great talking, everyone. Um, I answered this question about what cameras I use. Amcrest, if you look at my channel, I've got whole videos with in-depth details of which models they are and everything else. So thanks, everyone, and take care. I'm going to end this because my beer is ended. So we'll, we'll leave you on the beer in case you weren't here for figuring out what beer it was. Later.